Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this course, we're going to learn all about Telvin CSS Framework. Telvin is one of the fastest growing and promising CSS framework at the moment. It is different from other frameworks such as Bootstrap and Foundation because it is built on a new way of building user interfaces using utility first CSS classes structure. When your app grows, managing CSS becomes so painful. Telvin solves many problems by taking a lower level approach providing CSS helper classes that can be used to create and customize any design. To rapidly develop a website, Telvin is the best option today because in Telvin you have bunch of pre-built utility classes. Using Telvin you can make stylish website without writing any single line of CSS code. This course is for all the beginners who want to enhance their CSS knowledge further. We're going to start really from the scratch by understanding the basic concepts of Telvin. Then we're going to go ahead and learn some advanced techniques of Telvin CSS. Now let me show you what you're going to learn in this course. We're going to start with a basic understanding of how predefined utility classes are used in Telvin. Then we're going to understand how to install Telvin. We're going to understand two different methods to install Telvin CSS. Then we will understand the core concepts of Telvin. We're going to take a look at the different directives of Telvin in detail. Then we're going to take a look at the newly introduced JIT compiler which is just-in-time compiler, which is the new feature in Telvin. After that, we will understand the advanced concept like configuration and customization in the Telvin configuration file. And then we're going to understand how you can create your own plugin and preset in Telvin. And you're going to learn a lot more than this. Now, before taking this course, make sure you have the basic understanding of CSS. So before taking too much time, let's get started. So what is Telvin CSS? Telvin CSS is the most popular utility-first CSS framework in the world for rapidly building custom user interfaces for the web. Telvin released on 1st November 2017 on GitHub as open source project. By the beginning of August 2020, it is estimated that it was downloaded over 10 million times, making it one of the most rapidly growing CSS framework in the world at the time. It is different from other CSS framework such as Bootstrap and Foundation because of the new way of building user interfaces using utility first approach rather than using object oriented one. You can easily integrate Tailwind with many popular modern frameworks like React, Angular, Laravel, Vue and so on. Now the very first question comes in your mind is what is utility first approach? So let's take a look at a very simple example. Now if I were to give you a very quick CSS assignment to make a square with the background color brown, typically you would do something like this. You would create a square class and specify CSS properties with 50 pixel, height 50 pixel, and the background color brown. As you know, it works. But what if I told you that you don't need to write all these custom CSS rules or multiple CSS class names? Instead, you can write these rules directly into your HTML file, just like you write inline styling. So, this is what we call the utility first approach, or you can say utility first API style to style the element of a web page. So, what have I done here? I have used baked in Tailwind CSS classes and these are not just any classes these are utility classes with this you style element by applying pre-existing classes directly into your HTML in bootstrap and foundation if you want to change some style of the class you have to override the bootstrap class or property unlike bootstrap and foundation you can customize utility classes and generate a new utility classes as well according to your need there are hundreds of utility classes out there in Tailwind framework and most of them are easy to understand. So I'm not going to cover all of them. It is out of the course. So follow along with me with this amazing journey. I believe that it would be helpful if you get lost along the way. If you want to download the files, you can find them from the description of this video. Let's suppose you want to follow this course from third lecture. Then you can clone this project and change the branch of the Git repo. Enough theory. Now let's understand how to work with Tailwind. To work with Tailwind, you need to first install Node in your local system. So I'm going to open my browser and head on to nodejs.org and download the latest version of Node in my local system. I'm going to install this LTS recommended version of Node in my local system. I already have Node installed in my local system, so I'm not going to install it again. Instead, I'm going to open my Visual Studio Code Editor and open my terminal inside it. In this course, we are using Visual Studio Code Editor to write the code. Visual Studio Code is a free open source software which you can run anywhere on any system. I'm using Visual Studio Code throughout this course. If you are using Atom, Sublime Text or 
notepad that's completely fine so once you install both these software in your local system let me open the visual studio code first and inside that i'm going to open my terminal when you open your visual studio code you will get the welcome window first now what we are going to do is i'm going to create a new empty folder on my desktop and open that folder in this editor i already have course folder on my desktop so i'm going to click on this open folder and right from here i'm going to choose my course folder and select that folder and close this get started you can notice on the left side corner here you will have your folder name inside this folder i'm going to create a new project of tailwind but just for now let's open my terminal so from the menu i'm going to select terminal and click on this new terminal this will open a terminal i'm using git bash shell on windows with z shell installed on it so i'm going to have the terminal something like this so once you open your terminal you have to first check that your node is successfully installed or not now to check node is successfully installed or not just type a command node hyphen v when you press enter you will get the node version on your terminal now just out of that you have to type a command called npm hyphen v npm stands for node package manager we are using npm to install tailwind inside a project there are two different ways you can install tailwind in your project using npm and using cdn just type npm hyphen v to get the npm version as a response npm install automatically when you install node inside your project now just for that what we need we need to initialize this folder as npm package so we can install different modules inside it if you want you can create a new folder inside this course and initialize that folder as your npm package now because i'm not creating multiple projects inside this folder i'm going to initialize this current folder as npm package so to initialize this folder i'm going to just type here npm in it hyphen y and press enter this command is going to initialize this course folder as npm package so this will generate package.json file and you will have your package name version description and so on now just for that just clear the screen if you don't know anything about node and package.json file i have complete course on node.js you can find out that course from the description of this video now because we are using node just for installing tailwind we're going to just simply create a package.json file and then we're going to install tailwind so to install tailwind we have a command called npm install and then specify the package name which is going to be tailwind css now if you want you can just use here i i for install now this command is going to install this tailwind package inside your project now let me first open the tailwind documentation to show you this command so i'm going to just head on to tailwindcss.com and here you can find documentation of tailwind css you can notice here to install tailwind you can simply use the command npm install tailwind css you can just copy this command from here or you can type this command npm i for install and then specify your package name just press enter this will install this tailwind package inside your project once you've done that now this package is now installed in this node modules folder just clear the terminal and close it now just like that inside this project i'm going to create two folders i'm going to create two folders inside my node directory i'm going to click on this new folder icon and create a folder source just like that i'm going to click on this new folder icon again and create a new folder inside this root directory and i'm going to specify name to this folder public inside this source folder i'm going to create my css file and i'm going to generate the output file inside this public folder that's upon you you can specify any name to both these folders inside this source folder i'm going to create a new file i'm going to click on this new file icon and i'm going to name this file styles.css inside this file i'm going to write my css code now as you know we use .css extension to create css file and inside it we can write a css code so let me just write some code here i'm going to say body and inside this body i'm going to specify padding which is going to be 0 and margin is going to be 0 now just for that what you have to do is you have to compile this css file and generate your output css file now as you know when you have your standard css inside your css file you don't have to compile this file and generate a new output file but what if i add here some additional feature of tailwind inside this file in that case you will get an error message because you need to compile that file into a standard css this is just like you write your code in sas file and compile that into css tailwind use the same concept you write the code in css file in tailwind syntax and compile that into a standard css now you can notice here inside this file we have a simple css code 
But in the future lectures, I'm going to write Tailwind syntax inside this style sheet. So we need to first compile this file into a standard CSS. So to do that, I'm going to back to the package.json file. And here you can notice we have the test command. Let me get rid of it because we are not using it. I'm going to get rid of this command and create a new command here. I'm going to say here, build. And inside this build, I'm going to specify a command, tailwind, CSS, hyphen I, hyphen I indicates the input file. So I'm going to just specify here, src, my source folder. And inside that, I have styles.css file. I'm going to just first specify the input file for this tailwind compiler. And then I'm going to specify here, output file. So I'm going to specify hyphen O and then I'm going to specify here public forward slash output dot CSS. So I'm going to just add here tailwind CSS hyphen I, I indicates the input file. So I'm going to specify here source styles dot CSS, this file path. And then I'm going to specify hyphen O, the output file. And then I'm going to specify where I want to output the compiled file. So I'm going to specify here public folder, this one. Right now, I don't have anything inside this folder. And then I'm going to generate my output file with the name output.css. That's open you. You can specify any name to this output file. I'm going to save this file, open my terminal. And here I'm going to say npm run. And I'm going to execute this build command. So I'm going to specify here build. That's it. When I press enter, you can notice this command is going to create a new compiled file of CSS. You can notice here I have output.css file and inside that I have the same CSS code. That's easy, right? To compile Tailwind file into CSS. Now, just for that, what if I specify here color property, color, and I'm going to specify some hex color here like this. When I save this file and open the output.css, you can notice I don't have this color property inside this output file because to get this property, you need to recompile or you can say rebuild your Tailwind application. So you need to just specify here npm run build command again to get this property. Let me show you. If I just specify here npm run build, you can notice you will have your color property inside your output file. Now, as you can see, it's horrible to rebuild your application whenever you make any changes inside your CSS. Now to solve your problem and save your time, we have a simple watch flag. Using watch flag, whenever we make any changes inside this style or CSS, I want to regenerate this output.css. So to do that, I'm going to just open the package.json and at the end of this command right here, I'm going to add hyphen hyphen watch or you can also use hyphen w. Both are identical. This will add watch command to your statement. So whenever you make any changes inside your style.css, watch flag will automatically recompile your file. Let me show you. If I just open my terminal, clear the screen and at the last time, I'm going to execute my build command. That's it. Now, I don't have to care about this build command. Whenever I make any changes inside this file, for example, if I remove this color right from here, save the changes, you can notice I'm going to have this message in the terminal and in the output, I'm going to have the result of what I want. If I add the color again, save this file, watch flag will automatically recompile this style.css and I'm going to have my compile file inside this output.css. That's super easy, right? Next, I'm going to show you how you can add utility classes inside this Delvin project. Now, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can work with Delvin CSS utility classes. But before we understand that, in case you get lost, you can follow along with me using Git repository. So let me just put this code on my Git repo. So I'm going to first create a new file to exclude this node modules from the Git repository. So I'm going to create here a file dot git ignore. I'm going to create this file and exclude this node modules from the git repository. So I'm going to say here node modules. Save this file, close this file and then I'm going to initialize this project as git repo. So I'm going to open my terminal. Here I'm going to type a command git init. This command is going to initialize this folder as git repository. Just out of that, I'm going to type a command git add dot. This will add all the files inside my git repository like this. You can notice I'm going to have all this file on my master branch. Let me clear the screen and just commit all these changes. So I'm going to say here git commit hyphen m and then I'm going to specify here getting started. I'm going to press enter and commit all these changes on my master branch. 
Now, once I've done that, let me just push this remote repository on my Git server. So I'm going to say here, Git remote add origin, and then I'm going to specify my link. So I'm going to paste my Git repository link here, press enter. This will initialize this origin. And then I'm going to say here, Git push hyphen u origin master. I'm going to just push this origin into a master branch. I'm going to press enter and push this repository on the master branch. That's it. Just for that, and I'm going to just open my Git repository using this link. Don't worry, you can get this link from the description of this video. Now, once I successfully push my remote repository on the Git server, you can easily download it on your local system. You just need to click on this button and just copy this HTTP link. Just copy it, open your terminal, and just type here git clone and paste that link. You'll get this link from the description of this video. Once you've done that, you can follow along with me from my first lecture. If you want to start from this current lecture, you can switch to the lecture one branch. You can just specify a command git checkout and specify lecture one. Or you can find the branch name right here inside this section. You can just select the lecture one and clone that project. Now, once you understand how you can follow along with me, let me just show you how we can use utility classes of Delvin. Now, as I said in the intro, we don't have to write any CSS code in Delvin. Delvin will provide all the necessary CSS classes for you. You don't need to write any code. So let me just show you how you can add utility classes of Delvin inside your project. As you can notice here, inside this CSS file, I'm using a standard CSS. Instead of adding this standard CSS inside this .css, I'm going to add a Delvin syntax here. So at the top, here I'm going to create a command and say here, Delvin CSS utility classes. So to add utility classes in this .css file, you need to add a row. If you just back to the documentation of Delvin CSS, you can notice here, just click on the get started and click on the installation. Just scroll down and here you can notice, using this statement, you can include utility classes of Delvin inside your project. This is what we call a directives in Delvin CSS. So to add these three directives, so let me just copy all this code right from here and add that in my style.css, just like this. Save this file, just have that. Let me just open my terminal and here I'm gonna build this style.css. As you can see, inside my output, I just have this body. Let me just start my development server. So I'm gonna say here, npm run build. When I execute this command, it will take some time to build the output file and after some millisecond, you'll get your output file. But this time, inside this output file, you'll get more than 1000 line of CSS code. You can notice here, this three statement is going to add a bunch of CSS classes inside your output.css. And now, using this output.css, you can style your HTML element. We will look at base, component, and utility in more details later in this course. But first, let me show you how you can use Delvin CSS classes inside an HTML. So, let me just generate an HTML file inside this project. So, inside this public folder, here I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name this file index.html. I'm going to create this file and inside it, I'm going to create a simple HTML5 snippet. So, I'm going to press exclamation mark and press tab. If you're using Visual Studio Code, it's super easy to create HTML snippet. So, inside this title, I'm going to specify Delvin CSS course. And in the body, I'm going to create a paragraph. And inside this paragraph, I'm going to add 20 demo words. So, I'm going to say here, lorem 20. When I press tab, I'm going to have 20 demo words inside this paragraph. Just for that, let me save this file. Now, what I want, I want to open this file in the live server. So, I'm going to right click here and say, open with live server. If you don't have this option, just click on this extension tab of your VS Code editor and just search for here, live server. Just click on this live server extension and install this extension in your VS Code. This extension allows you to launch a development server with a live reload feature for a static and a dynamic pages. So whenever you make any changes inside your HTML file, you will get the updated data on your browser automatically. You don't have to reload your browser whenever you update your HTML file. I'm going to just right click here and say open with live server. This will open my browser and I'm going to have my paragraph here. Let me just zoom this up a little bit. And let me just toggle my VS Code window on the right side of the screen. Now, just for that, what you need? You need to link the output.css file to this index.html. So, at the top, just out of this title, here I'm going to add a link tag and just specify here output.css. Let me save this file. 
you can notice i'm going to have the different font family to this paragraph because we already have styling to this paragraph inside the utility classes now just after that let me show you how we can specify utility classes to this paragraph here i'm going to specify a class if i want to specify font family mono to this paragraph i can simply say here font mono when i save the changes this will change the font family of this paragraph i already have this class in my output.css file i don't need to write any code for that just like that what if i want to change the font size of this paragraph if i want to change the font size of this paragraph i'm going to just specify here text hyphen sm save this file if i specify here lg and if i just specify here 9 xl and save the changes you can see you will get the bigger font size on your screen now let me show you some more classes on telvin documentation that's easy to specify any font family and font size to your paragraph if you open the telvin documentation and scroll down you can notice here just down here you have a typography section and here you will find font family and font size let me click on font family you can use all these three classes to change the font family of your paragraph i'm going to show you how you can add your own font inside telvin later in this course just for now just click on this font size and here you can find the classes of font size you can notice here we have different properties to different classes to specify 0.75 rem font size you can use this text xs if you want to specify base font size to your element you can specify class text base or if you want to increase the size of your font you can use this text 3 excel and so on so that's upon you you can specify any classes from this section to change the font size of your html element don't worry you can customize all these classes according to your need just try to practice with these classes to understand how it works so what if i just specify here excel and just grab this paragraph and put that inside a container if i just create here a division tag like this or i can just simply create here a div with the class container just like this when i press tab i'm going to have a division tag with the class container and if i put my paragraph inside this container and when i save the changes i'm going to have a fix width to this paragraph let me show you if i just specify here background color to show you the container if i specify here a class bg indigo 500 when i save the changes you can notice i'm going to have color to this container right now I have full width to this container. Let me just use my inspect tool to show you the responsive behavior of this container. In the inspect tool, when I resize this viewport, you can notice we have the responsive behavior of this container class. Container class is going to change its size according to the viewport. Now let me just center this container. If I just add here a class to this container, mx auto, this will add left and right margin to this container when i say the changes this will center this container i'm going to have left and right auto margin to this container so you will get your container at the center of the document you can find more about container on the tailwind documentation right here you can just click on this container from this layout section and here you can notice you can find more about this container inside this documentation don't worry i'm going to show you how you can use this container in your application later in this course as you know, here we use npm to install Telvin inside this project. What if I want to use Telvin using CDN? Let me show you how you can install Telvin with CDN. So let's take a look at how you can install Telvin CSS using CDN. So to install Telvin CSS, just type Telvin CSS CDN and just head on to cdnjs.com. So once you open the cdnjs.com, you can copy this link by clicking on this copy link tag and paste that just up here and now you don't need this output.css so i'm going to just comment this like this let me save this file back to my project as you can see i'm going to have the same result you're going to have the same benefits of using cdn but there are many disadvantages of using cdn telvin css work great with npm if you try to use cdn then you can't customize the default theme of telvin you can't use any directives like apply variants etc as well as you can't add additional variants. We are going to understand what is apply, variants, and all that later in this course. The another disadvantage of using CDN is you can't install third-party plugins, and you can't remove unused style from the Tailwind default file. You can't remove the unused CSS classes from the Tailwind file. So these are some major disadvantages of using CDN. So instead of using CDN, I will recommend you to use NPM to work with Tailwind CSS. So instead of using this link, 
I'm going to comment this and comment this output file. That's it. Next, we're going to understand container in more detail. We will understand how you can use breakpoint with a container class and how you can make your container more responsive. Now, let's take a look at how you can use breakpoints in Tailwind CSS. As you know, using container, we're going to specify width to the HTML element. Let me show you how you can use these breakpoints and what is the meaning of these breakpoints in Tailwind. Now, in the project, you can notice here, we use here container class. This class is actually going to specify with 100% to this division tag. When I decrease my viewport and when my viewport is equal to 640 pixel, Telvin is going to specify max width to this container 640 pixel. When the viewport is equal to 768 pixel for the medium size of devices, Telvin is going to specify max width to the container 768 pixel. And Telvin will do the same for both these breakpoints. Now, for example, let's suppose if any user open your website on the viewport 768 pixel then Telvin is going to specify 768 max width to this container using this breakpoint if the user open your website or you can say your application on mobile devices generally small devices has 640 pixel viewport so if someone try to open your website on small devices on 640 pixel Telvin is going to specify max width to your container 7640 pixel so according to the viewport, Telvin is going to change the max width of your container. Now, let me show you how you can use breakpoints with container. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open my example. And here, I'm going to just add a class, H32. This will add height to this container. Just out of that, instead of this paragraph, I'm going to specify here, H2 heading tag. And inside that, I'm going to specify container. And to this H2, I'm going to specify class, which is text to Excel. This will change the font size of this H2 heading tag. Then I'm going to specify text gray 200. And then I'm going to specify text center to center this text. Let me save this file. As you can see, I'm going to have the result something like this. If you want, you can change this background color with different classes. You can notice. Now, using breakpoints, container class is set the max width to the element. This is useful if you had prepared to design for a fixed set of screen sizes instead of trying to accommodate a full width viewport. Now, let's suppose I want to specify full width to this container only when the viewport is less than 1024 pixel. If the viewport is greater than that, I'm going to specify max width to the container. So, let me show you how you can do it. As you know, container is going to specify max width to the HTML element. So, this container is going to specify 100% width to this division tag. What if I remove this container from here? When I save this file, you can see I'm going to have full width to this viewport. But what I want, when the viewport is equal to or greater than 1024 pixel, I want to specify max width to this container. In that case, I'm going to simply use here a breakpoint called LG colon and then I'm going to specify here container. Make sure you have space between all these classes. Otherwise, you will not going to have any result on your HTML page. Let me save this file. And now if I increase the viewport, you can notice I have max width to this container. Now, let's do the same thing with different class. As you can notice here, I'm using here MX Auto to center this container. Let me get rid of this class from here. For now, save this file. And you can notice I have this container on the left side of this document. When I increase or decrease my viewport, I'm still going to have this container on the left side of this document. What I want, I want to center this container only when the viewport is greater than 1024 pixel. So, to do that, I can just simply add LG, the breakpoint, and specify here colon, and specify class name, MX Auto. That's it. Telvin is going to specify this MX Auto CSS property to this division tag only when the viewport is equal to 1024 pixel or greater than that. When I save this file, you can notice I'm going to have my container center at the document. When the viewport is less than 1024 pixel, I'm going to have the container on the left side of the screen. Let me change this breakpoint. What if I specify here Excel? This means if the viewport is greater than or equal to 1280 pixel, I want to specify MX Auto class to this division tag. So if I just specify here Excel, save this file. If I increase the viewport, you can notice here my container is on the left side of this document. But when the viewport is equal to 1280 pixel my container will automatically center 
my container is now centered at the document. So basically, breakpoints are used to specify classes to your HTML element on certain condition. Here, I have a condition, if the viewport is equal to the large devices or greater than that, I want to specify container to this division tag. On the second condition, here I have if the viewport is equal to XL, means if it is equal to 1280 pixel, I want to specify MX Auto class to this division tag. Otherwise, I don't want to add anything. That's it. That is the simple explanation of breakpoint. Now, you're not limited to only use these breakpoints with container or MX Auto class. You can use this breakpoint with any Tailwind CSS classes. Now, for practice, choose utility classes from this section and apply breakpoints to them and see the result. Next, we're going to see how flex utility work in Tailwind. Now, once we understand how breakpoint work in Tailwind, in this lecture, we're going to talk about Flexbox. So just scroll down and click on this Flexbox. Using Flexbox utility, we can control the direction of the flex item. Let me show you a very simple example of it. If I just simply get rid of this H2 heading tag right from here, and if I create here a division tag with a class flex, then this will specify flex property to this division tag. And inside this, I'm going to create here a flex item. So I'm going to create here a div with a class name flex initial. And inside this div, I'm going to say flex1. Save this file. Inside my Delvin, I'm going to have my first flex box here. Now let me specify some style to this flex1. So I'm going to specify here style. So I'm going to first specify here font size, the font family. Then I'm going to specify bg indigo 600. Then I'm going to specify width, which is going to be 40. And height is going to be 40. Then I'm going to specify text center. And then text gray is going to be 200. At the last, I'm going to specify text Excel to change the font size of this flex. Let me save this file. As you can see, I'm going to have here Flexbox. Just out of that, let me change the container background color. So instead of BG Indigo, I'm going to use here BG Green. And this is going to be green 400. Save this file. As you can see, I'm going to have my container here. Let me get it off this height. Then I'm going to duplicate this division tag and paste it here and paste it here. So I'm going to have three flex box inside this division tag. You can notice I have three flex box here inside my container. This is what we call a flex container. And inside that we have three flex item. You can see we have flex one, flex two and flex three in a row. What if you want to change this flex direction? You can change that using Tailwind utility class. But before that, let me add some space between this flex item. So I can use here gap utility class. I'm going to specify here gap 8. When I save the changes, you can see I'm going to have some gap between these flex boxes. Now, what if I want to change the direction of this flex box? I can just simply add here a class flex col. This means I want to change the flex direction from row to column. When I save this file, you can see I'm going to have flex direction column. Now, let me use breakpoint with this flex box. Now, if I want to make this flex box responsive, I can use breakpoint utility. So, what I want when the viewport is greater than 768 pixel, I want to change the direction of this column. To do that, I'm going to just simply add here a class called flex row. This class is going to specify flex direction row to this flex container. But I want to add this class only when the viewport is greater than or equal to 768 pixel. In that case, I need to use here a breakpoint. So I'm going to say here MD colon. When I save these changes, you can notice when the viewport is equal to 768 pixel or greater than that, I'm going to have flex column in row direction. If the viewport is less than that, I'm going to have flex in column direction. If you don't want to use breakpoints to make your flex box responsive, you can just use flex wrap class. So instead of this flex column and MD row, I can just simply add here flex wrap. When I save the changes, if the viewport is less than the size of your flex item, you can see the flex item will automatically change its direction. Now, if you open your Tailwind CSS documentation, then here you can find more about flex direction. Using flex row, we understand you can specify flex direction row to the flex container. You can reverse that container using flex throw reverse. If you want to create your flex item in a column, you can specify flex column. And if you want to reverse that column, you can use flex call reverse. 
you can find the documentation of flex here when you scroll down you can see you can use flexbox with different breakpoints as well so this is super easy to use flexbox when you specify flex wrap it's going to specify a css property to your html element flex wrap wrap if you want to reverse that you can use your flex wrap reverse if you don't want to wrap your flex item you can just specify flex no wrap when you specify no flex wrap you will have the result something like this just after that you have flex inside Telvin. using flex one you can specify flex one one zero that will just change the size of your flex item you can notice here when you specify flex initial that will just change your flex item size according to your content when you specify flex one it will specify the equal size to your flex item you can also specify auto and none just out of that you have flex row this is also useful classes in Telvin CSS using this utility you can control how flex item grow for example let's say if you have a flex grow to the second flex item when you decrease the viewport you can notice only the center div increase and decrease its size when you scroll down if you don't want to grow the flex item you can use flex grow zero your flex item will not change its size when you decrease or increase your viewport you will have the same size for your flex item you can also make this utilities a responsive with different breakpoints just after that we have flex shrink this utility help us to control how flex item shrink then we have order using order you can control the order of flex and the grid item so there are many utility classes out there in telvin you have to search that in the documentation and practice with it next i'm going to show you how you can work with the grid layout in telvin css now in this lecture we're going to talk about grid system if you open your Telvin CSS documentation, then you will find grid template column utility classes inside the documentation. Using grid, you can specify columns to your layout. Grid is just like Flexbox, but with more control over your layout. So let's take a look at how you can use grid using Telvin CSS. So I'm going to open my website and here I'm going to use grid columns. So what I need to do is let me first get rid of these division tags and instead of this flex here, I'm going to simply use grid. To use grid columns, you need to just specify here grid, just like this. And then you need to specify how many columns you want in a row. For example, if I want three columns in a row, then I can simply specify here grid calls three. Just out of that, inside this grid container, I'm going to create grid items. So here I'm going to create a div and inside that I'm going to specify grid column one. And to this div, I'm going to specify some classes of Telvin CSS. So I'm going to specify font sans, then specify bg yellow 300, then specify w full. This will specify full width to this division tag, then specify h40. This will add height to this div. Just out of that, I'm going to specify text center, and then I'm going to add text excel. This will add font size to this grade column text. Let me just save this file, open my website. And here I'm going to have my first grid column. Let me add a few more. So I'm going to copy this div and paste it down here like this. Just after that, I'm going to change this to one, two, two, and this became three. When I save this file, you can notice I'm going to have three columns inside my container. Now what I want, I want to add some space between these columns. So just like Flexbox, you can use gap utility class to add space between these grid items. So I'm going to just specify here gap three when i save the changes you can notice this will add a gap between these columns you can see the background color of the container in tailwind you can create 12 columns inside a single row to use these classes you need to create a grid container and inside that you need to specify grid and grid columns and then specify how many columns you want inside a row this container div is going to create a row and this class is going to specify how many columns you want inside a row here i have calls three that is why this will create three columns in a row in the previous lecture we understand how you can make your column responsive using flexbox flexbox and grid both are identical but with grid you have more control over your columns let me show you let's suppose you want three columns on a large device and two columns on a medium device and one column on a small device when i decrease the viewport I'm going to have three columns on every device, on every screen. Now, what I want for the large screen, I want three columns. For the medium screen, I want two columns. And 
from the small screen, I want one column. So to do that, I can use breakpoints. I'm going to simply add here breakpoint to this grid call three. I'm going to add here MD colon. Just out of that, for the large devices, or you can say for the large screen, I'm going to specify here LG grid calls three here. But when the viewport is for medium size of devices, I'm going to specify column two. You can notice how I add condition here. For the large devices, I want three columns. For the medium devices, I want only two columns. Let me save this file. You can notice here for the large devices, I have three columns. When I decrease the viewport, and when the viewport is for medium devices, you can notice I have two columns in a row. When the viewport is less than that, I have one column in a row. You can notice. So this is how you can control your columns and make your website responsive. Now, just for that, you have create columns start end. Using this utility, you can control how elements are sized and placed across grid columns. For example, you can notice here we have here three columns in a row. I want to span the fourth column till the second column. So I'm going to just add a class to the fourth column, which is called span two. Two is the size of the columns. Means how many columns you want to span this fourth division type. So using this utility classes, you can span your grid items. Just down here, you also have call start and call end utility classes. Using that, you can specify from where you want to start your grid item. For example, here you can notice inside this example, we have the grid column six. So inside a single row, we have six columns. We're going to start this first div from the second column and end that at fourth column. If you know more about grid system, you can find the link of that video from the description. Then if you want to convert these columns into row, you have that classes here as well. Using this grid row one, you can convert your grid into rows. So there are different utility classes you can use to control your layout. You just have to practice with these classes to understand how utility classes is useful to create a responsive website. Now Tailwind CSS is well documented. I don't think there is any need to explain all these utility classes. So instead of working on these classes, Let's move to the core concept of Telvin CSS. So in the next lecture, we will understand the advantages of using Utility First API. Now in the first lecture, we understood the concept of a Utility First framework. Let's understand what is the advantages of using Utility First API. As you know, with standard CSS, to create a design, you write HTML and CSS. For example, you have here a container a container with the h1 heading tag with the nav brand class and you have styling to this html inside your css let's suppose if i create here a style and specify styling to this html now you can notice this is a standard way to style your html element but with tailwind you style element by applying pre-existing classes directly into your html so instead of adding this container and this nav brand we simply add these css properties to the HTML element. For example, instead of this nav brand, I'm going to just use Telvin utility class to specify font family and padding to this H1 heading tag. So here I'm going to just specify font Arial and P0. That will specify font family and padding to this H1 heading tag. So instead of adding the nav brand, I'm going to simply specify utility classes of Telvin CSS. Now this approach allows you to implement a completely custom component design without writing a single line of a CSS code. You have all the utility classes in Telvin CSS file. Now you can notice to style the H1 heading tag, I'm using font Arial and padding zero. Now because I just wanted to specify only two CSS properties to this H1 heading tag, here I'm going to use two utility classes. But what if you have more than two properties to your H1 heading tag? For example, let's say you have padding, margin, font size, font family, background color, text color, and text size. In that case, you have more than 10 classes to your H1 heading tag. You might think this is a horrible mess. How you can handle all these classes in HTML? How you can manage it? I also have the same thought, but by understanding the benefits of utility first API, you're definitely gonna change your mind. Once you actually build something with this way, you'll quickly notice some really important benefits. Using a traditional approach, your CSS file gets bigger every time you add a new feature. With utilities, everything is reusable, so you rarely need to write a new CSS code. Then you have the second benefit, which is changes feel safer. As you know, CSS is global, and you never know what you're breaking when you make changes in the CSS. But in Telvin, classes you're using in HTML are local. 
so you can change them without worrying about something else breaking. Then you also have a class name conflict. Don't you think you are wasting your time by creating silly class names just to be able to style something? And you all know organizing class names is also a headache. You might say, why not just use inline styles? In inline style, you can style directly to the element instead of assigning them to a class name and then styling that class name. But utility classes has a few important advantages over inline styling. You all know this is a responsive design world. You have to make every design responsive. But you can't use media queries in inline style. But you can use Telvin's responsive utilities to build fully responsive interfaces easily. You also know using inline styling, you can't target the states like hover and focus. You can use pseudo selectors in inline styling. But Telvin's use pseudo selector or you can say state variance to make it easy to style those states with utility classes. With Telvin, you could add more than 10 utility classes to your HTML element. And that classes may repeat. Let me create a very simple example to answer all your questions. Let me get rid of this HTML element, get rid of this style right from here. And right down here inside this body, I'm going to create two buttons. I'm going to add here a button and I'm going to add the button again with the same utility classes. Let me save this file. On my browser, I'm going to have two buttons with the same utility classes. The biggest maintainability concern when using utility first approach is managing commonly repeated utility combinations. To maintain this type of HTML structure, you can simply use apply feature of Delvin. Let me show you how you can use that. Inside your style.css, just down here, you can simply add dot btn. You can create a simple class. And inside that class, you can add a rule of Delvin, which is add apply. Using this rule, you can specify your Delvin utility classes to this single CSS class. For example, if I just add here padding 2, px4, and font semi bold, these are the utility classes we are going to apply to this button class. Once I have my button, just down here, I'm going to add another class btn green. And to this button green, I'm going to apply utility classes. So I'm going to add here rule, apply, and then specify some utility classes. So here I use a rounded LG, shadow, text white, BG green, and we also added the hover effect on this BG green class. So now once you apply all these classes to this BTN green and to this BTN, instead of adding all these classes right here, you can just simply add here BTN like this. So that will just specify. So this BTN class is going to specify this padding 2, padding X, and this font semi bold to this button. And if you want to specify these utility classes to this button, then you can add this BTN green to this button class, BTN green. And you can do the same thing to this second button, like this. So now using this technique, I don't have the repeated utility classes to my HTML element. And now you can notice it's easy to manage your HTML with this apply feature. You're just simply using the predefined styling of CSS. Now I think this technique will answer most of your questions. But if you still have any question about utility first API, then you can comment me down. Now in the previous lecture, we understand how basically we can add breakpoints inside HTML to make the element responsive. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how the breakpoints is useful to specify styling only for the certain breakpoint. For example, let's say you want to specify styling only for the mobile devices, not for the medium and the large devices. On Tailwind, you can apply every utility class with breakpoint to make your website responsive. Every utility class in Tailwind can be applied conditionally at different breakpoints. There are five breakpoints by default in Tailwind. Let's look at them. When you open your Tailwind documentation, in the core concept, you will find a responsive design tab. Just click on it. Here you can find more about responsive design. Here we have different breakpoints. Now, as you know, we use these breakpoints to add condition inside the classes. For example, let's say if I want to add text center to the element when the viewport is 768 pixel, I can simply add MD, then specify colon, and then specify the class name. Now, when you do that, inside your Delvin, you have your class inside the media query. You are basically adding your class inside a media query. This media query only execute that class when the viewport is greater than or equal to 768 pixel. When you add any breakpoint to your class name, that will actually call these media queries. So any breakpoint you specify to the class will actually going to call the media queries. If you use MD, 
before the class name it's going to call this media query to add a utility but only have it take effect at a certain breakpoint all you need to do is prefix the utility with the breakpoint name you can notice here followed by the colon and the class name now here in this example the default width of this image is 16 when the viewport is greater than or equal to 768 pixel i'm going to specify 32 width to this image and when the viewport is equal to or wider than 1024 pixel i'm going to specify 48 width to this image so on different condition we specify different styling this works for every utility class in the framework which means you can change literally anything at given breakpoint even things like line height or cursor style by default tailwind uses the mobile first breakpoint system similar to what you might be used to in other framework like bootstrap what this means is that unprefix utilities like container take effect on all screen sizes while prefix utilities like empty width will only take effect at a specific breakpoint and above now let's suppose you want to target the mobile screens means you want to specify style to the html element when the viewport is less than 640 pixel in that case you might use sm breakpoint so let's take a look at a very simple example inside my html here i'm going to create a simple division tag and inside that i'm going to specify text center and to this tip i'm going to specify some classes so i'm going to first specify background color so i'm going to say here dg indigo 400 save this file then i'm going to specify width width is going to be 50 percent so in tailwind you have a class called one by this will specify 50% width to this division tag. You can notice. Just for that, I want to center this text. So I'm going to specify here text center. Now, what I want, I only want to apply this text center when the viewport is less than or equal to 640 pixel. Means I only want to apply the text center class when the user opens the mobile screens. So to do that, you might use the SM breakpoint. For example, you can just add here SM and specify text center. When you save the changes, you can notice when the viewport is less than 640 pixel, you're going to have text center on the left side of the screen. You can see this SM breakpoint will not work. To style something for mobile, you need to use the unprefix version of utility, not the SM prefix version. Don't think SM as meaning on small screens. Think of it as at the small breakpoint. As I said earlier, when you specify breakpoint to your utility class, that utility class is going to specify inside this media query to this media query we have a css property called mean width means the minimum width of the viewport so as i said tailwind breakpoints only include a minimum width and don't include a max width which means any utilities you add at a smaller breakpoint will also be applied at larger breakpoints so instead of adding sm prefix to this text center you can just simply add another class with sm prefix and this is going to be text left so i'm going to just specify text center when the viewport is less than 640 pixel and if the viewport is equal to 640 or wider than that i'm going to specify text left property when i decrease the viewport you can notice when the viewport is less than 640 pixel my text is on the center of this division tag and when the viewport is greater than 640 pixel my text is now on the left side of this division tag so I hope you understand how breakpoints work in Delvin CSS. Next, we're going to understand how we can work with pseudo selector in Delvin CSS. One of the most interesting thing in CSS is pseudo selector. Pseudo selectors allows us to add events inside CSS. Similar to how Delvin handles responsive design, styling elements on hover, focus and more can be accomplished by prefixing utilities with the appropriate state variant. In Telvin, pseudo selector are generally called state variants or you can just call it variants. In Telvin, you can add state variant just like you add breakpoints. Let's suppose you want to add hover effect on a button. You can just simply add a button inside your HTML with some classes. You can notice how I use hover effect inside this class. Here I have variant hover and then I'm going to add here a class bg red 700. This means when I hover on this button, I'm going to apply this class to this button. Not all state variants are enabled for all utilities by default due to the file size consideration. But if you need to target a state that Tailwind doesn't support, you can extend the supported variant by writing a variant plugin. We're going to look at how you can write plugins in Tailwind later in this course. If you open the Tailwind documentation, inside a core concept, you can find the hover, focus and other state. 
Here you can find more about hover effect. Inside this example, we have input tag and a button. When I hover on this button, we have some hover effect. And when I click inside this text box, I'm going to have focus event. To add these variants, or you can say to add these pseudo selectors to your element, you can just simply prefix that classes with the variants. So to add focus event, you specify focus and then specify the class name you want to apply to the element when you focus on it. You can do the same with the hover and other state variants. When you scroll down here, you can find how you can apply hover effect on the button. If you have a simple button, you can specify hover effect on it by just adding prefix hover. By default, the hover variant is enabled for few plugins. You can use hover variants with these plugins. In CSS, we have background color as a property. Telvin use that as a core plugin. These all are the plugins in Telvin. I'm going to show you how you can create your own plugin in Telvin later. Just keep in mind, the hover effect is only enabled for these plugins. If you want to add your own plugins and add hover effect on it, you have to customize the Telvin default file. Just down here, we have focus. To specify focus event, you can just simply prefix the class with the focus and then specify the utility class which you want to apply to the element when you focus on it. You can notice how easy it is to specify focus pseudo selector to the element. When you click on the input text box, you're going to have the focus event on it. Just down here, you have active. You can specify active variant when you want to show the element is active or not. Just scroll down. Here you can find group hover effect. We use this hover group variant when we need to style the child element when hovering over the specific parent element. You can notice when I hover on this parent element, I'm going to change the styling of the child element. And when you scroll down, you can find the enable variant for this group hover. Just scroll down here, you can find group focus, focus within, then you have focus visible. And then you can notice here we have the responsive prefix as well. So for example, if you want to specify some variants on a certain breakpoint, you can use breakpoints for that. For example, here we have a button and on this button, we have this hover effect. I want to change this class when the viewport is less than 640 pixel. So we're going to add here SM breakpoint, then we pass colon and then we pass the hover variants. And after that, we pass colon again and then specify which class I want to apply when the viewport is less than 640 pixel. So we're going to add two conditions here. When the viewport is less than or equal to 640 pixel and when the user hover on the button, I'm going to apply this class to this button. When you scroll down and from here you can find which variants are enabled by default. Here you can notice we have different plugins here. Background color is a core plugin of Telvin and we pass responsive, dark, group hover, focus within, hover and focus variants. So with these variants, you can use this background color utility class. You can notice to all these plugins, you have responsive variants. So this is how you can simply add pseudo selectors to your HTML. In Telvin, that's easy. Next, we're going to take a look at the important directives of Telvin, which is base, component and utilities. Now, from this lecture, we're going to start understanding directives. By default, you will get three directives with Telvin base, component and utilities. Let's take a look at all these directives one by one. So let's start with the first one, the base directives. Using base directives, Telvin specify the base styling to the HTML element. For example, inside this base styling, Telvin will style the anchor tags, h1 heading tags, paragraph and all the HTML elements. So basically base directives used to specify basic styling to your HTML element. For example, let's say if you add anchor tag, when you add the anchor tag without any style, you would get blue text color. Let me show you. When I save the changes and comment this output.css file like this, when I save this file back to my HTML file and as you can notice here, we have the blue color to this anchor tag. Now this is the base style of HTML anchor tag. You all know you don't actually use this style anywhere. So why should we change this style every time we add an anchor tag? So tell me add base styling to the anchor tag and save some time. So if I just remove this uncomment output file and I save this file, you can notice I'm going to have some styling to this anchor tag. In Telvin, there are a bunch of pre-styling for your HTML elements, for your anchor tag, for the h1 heading tags, paragraph and so on. You have the base styling to your HTML element inside base styling section. Telvin includes a useful set of base style out of the box that is what Telvin call pre-flight. 
Preflight is a setup based style for Tailwind project. When you add Tailwind base in your style.css, Tailwind will automatically inject over here. Preflight moves all the default margin from elements like headings, back quotes, paragraph, and so on. So this makes it harder to accidentally rely on margin values applied by the user agent style sheet that are not part of your spacing scale. All heading elements are completely styled by default and have the same font size and font width as normal text. Let me show you. If I just add here h1 heading tag, let me save this file. You can notice we have the same font width and font size to all the h1 heading tags. But what if you want to change this base styling of this h1 heading tag? and you want to add your own base styling inside Tailwind. Let's suppose you have a simple anchor tag. Let me put this window on the right side. So let's suppose you have an anchor tag and you want to specify your base styling to this anchor tag. To do that, you will back to the style.css and just down here, you will simply add at the rate, layer, then specify base, the directives, and then specify curly braces. Now let me explain what is the meaning of this layer. Using layer directives, Tailwind will automatically move those style to the same place as Tailwind base to avoid unintended specificity issue. So simply said, Tailwind will move your style inside this base directives. When you specify that using this layer directives. Using layer directives, we will also instruct Tailwind to consider those style for purging when purging the base layer. Tailwind will override the base style of the anchor tag and put your own base style inside the base directives. For example, we have the predefined style for this anchor tag. You have style inside this anchor tag. Using this layer directives, we're going to inform the Tailwind to put your style after this styling. So this styling can override with yours. That's easy, right? Just for that, here inside this base, I'm going to add anchor tag. And inside this anchor tag, I'm going to add apply feature. As you know, we're using apply feature. We can specify utility classes to the element. So here I'm going to add apply. Then I'm going to say text blue 600 and then I'm going to specify underline. When I save the changes, you can notice I'm going to have the blue color to the text and we have the underline to this anchor tag. So Tailwind is basically specify our style after its default styling of the anchor tag. Next, we're going to take a look at more about component directives. Now let's talk about the component directives of Tailwind. We all know using base directives, the Tailwind specify the base styling to the HTML elements. To understand what is component directives, let's take a look at a very simple example. Now let's suppose you have a button with some utility classes. So for example, you have here a button with some utility classes. When I save this file, this will create a simple button here. You can use this button in multiple places in your web application. If you are using this button in multiple places in your web application, in that case, you will find yourself repeating common utility combination to recreate the same component in many different places. Keeping the long list of utility classes in sync across many component instances can quickly become a real maintenance burden. So when you start running into painful duplication like this, it's a good idea to extract all these utility classes in a component. So we're going to just back to the style.css and here we're going to create a new component. So to create a component, you will start with the layer directives. So we'll first add here layer directives, and then you specify where you want to add this component. We want to add this component inside this component directives. So we're going to add here components. And inside this curly braces, we create a simple component. Now inside Tailwind, component is nothing but a simple class. Inside you have all the utility classes. So to create a component, you first specify the component name. So for example, if I specify name to this component, btn blue and inside this curly braces here i'm going to add all the utility classes i have to this button this one so i'm going to add all these utility classes here inside this button using apply directives just like this now when you save this file tailwind is going to create your btn blue component inside this component directives and to add this btn blue component you can simply add this class to your button so instead of these class names, you can just simply create here a class with your component name, btn blue. That's it. When you save the changes, you're going to have your component style to your button. Now you can notice it's super easy to maintain this button. So when you create a component inside Tailwind file, Tailwind will automatically move those style to the same place 
at the Tailwind components. You don't have to worry about getting the order right in your source file. Tailwind will automatically do that. And now if you want, you can add multiple components inside this component directives. So I hope you understand what is component and how you can create your own component in Tailwind. Next, we're going to understand utility directives. Now let's talk about the Tailwind utility directives. Inside this Tailwind utility directives, you have a bunch of utility classes. For example, in the previous lecture, we used these utility classes to apply some style to this component. These are what we call the utility classes. In Tailwind, you have a bunch of utility classes. Tailwind provides a pretty comprehensive set of utility classes out of the box. You may run into a situation where you need to add a few of your own. So what if you want to create your own utility class? The easiest way to add your own utilities to Tailwind is to simply add them to your CSS. You know that there are many padding utilities in Tailwind to specify padding to your element. Let me show you a very simple example to understand how you can create your own utilities in Tailwind. Just open your documentation and here you can search for different utilities. So if I just search for here padding, then I'm gonna have all the padding utility classes. Now using this padding, I can specify different padding to the element. Now what if I want to specify 5.5 rem padding to the element? You can notice here, I can use 5 rem padding by specifying padding 20 to the element. But what if I want to specify 5.5 rem padding to the element? In that case, you can create your own utility inside a Tailwind. So if you want to create your own utility, you need to first add here a layer directives. So just add here layer. As you know, using layer, we specify where we want to add utilities inside Tailwind. We are going to add our own utility inside utilities directives. So I'm going to first add layer and then we specify here utilities. Just after that, we specify here curly braces and inside these utilities, we create our own utility class. So to create own utility class, for example, here we have padding 20. I'm going to add 5.5 rem to the padding. So I'm going to create here a class called P21. And to this P21, I'm going to specify padding, which is going to be 5.5 rem. That's it. When I say the changes, I'm going to have this padding inside these utility directives. If I just add here padding 21, save this file. If I just add here background color, BG indigo, save this file. And you can notice here, I'm going to have my padding to this button. So this will simply add my own utility inside the Telvin CSS. Now you can use 5.5 RAM paddings using your own utility class. Layer directive is going to place your code where it belongs to. So this utility belongs to this utility directives. So layer is going to place your code inside utility directives. Telvin will just create 21 utility in the Telvin file. But what if you want to use variants with it? Let's suppose you want to add 5.5 RAM padding to the button when you hover on it. Keep in mind, Telvin will not create state variants with your own utility classes. Instead, you need to create that of your own. If you want to specify 5.5 RAM padding to this button when you hover on it, you can just simply add here variants. So just down here, you can add a directives called variants like this. And inside this variants, you can add your padding. So I'm going to just copy this class and just specify that here. And then you need to specify the variant name. So just out of this variants, I want to access this padding class on hover variant. So I'm going to add here hover. If you're accessing this padding utility with focus, you can just add here comma and then add here focus. That's easy, right? Now this variants is going to create two classes, one for the hover and second for the focus. So you can use this utility with hover and with this focus pseudo selectors, or you can say state variants. When you save the changes and when you add here hover as a prefix to this utility, save this file. When you hover on this button, you can notice this will add this padding to this button when you hover on it. Now using the same technique, you can add other variants as well. Now let me explain this one more time. We create a utility with this P21. This will create a utility inside Telvin. Then we specify the variants we are using with these utilities. We are using hover variants with these utilities. So we specify variant here, hover and focus. And then we specify the utility again inside these variants. So this statement is actually going to create three classes inside these utilities. First, 
it will create this utility class then it's going to create the utility with hover and then it's going to create the utility with focus don't worry i will explain how this directive works in detail in the next lecture now i hope you have the basic understanding of base component and utility directives next we're going to understand how this directive works in delvin Now, once we understand the basic concept of base, component, and utility directives of Delvin CSS, now let's take a look at how this directive works in Delvin. So, let me first split this window, and right here, I'm going to open my output file, output.css. As you know, inside this file, I have all the compiled code. Let me get rid of all these three lines right from here. Save this file. This will recompile the output file and remove all the code from this file because I don't have any code inside this style.css. So let's understand how directive works in Delvin. So let's start with the apply directives. As you know, we use apply directives to inline any existing utility classes into your own custom CSS. This is useful when you find a common utility pattern in your HTML that you would like to extract to the new component. Let's suppose you have a button class and inside that you have apply directives. And with this apply you have font bold, padding y2, padding x4 and rounded utility classes. Now let me save this style.css and show you what you're going to have inside the compiled CSS file. When I save the changes, you can notice inside the compiled CSS file, I'm going to have a button. I don't need to write any CSS code to create this button class. You can notice I just use the utility classes here to get this result. Now let me create another class here. Here I'm going to create btn. And I'm going to add here apply. At this time, I'm going to add bg blue 500. This is the background color utility. With this utility, I'm going to add hover effect to this btn blue. So here I'm going to add hover colon and then specify bg blue 700. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify this color to this button blue class. But when I hover on it, I want a blue 700 color to this button. Now, let me save this file and show you the result. When I save the changes, you can notice Delvin is going to first create the button blue class and then it's going to create the hover class. You don't have to write any CSS code to create hover effect and a focus event. So, if I just add here focus pseudo selector, when I save the changes, Delvin will automatically recompile this output file and you will get focus pseudo selector to this BTN blue. Delvin will easily create all these classes so you don't have to write any CSS code. Now let me show you one more example. If I just add here simple paddings, if I add here padding y2 and padding 4, when I save the changes, I'm going to have padding, padding top and padding bottom as a result inside the compile file. You can notice we have here padding, padding top and padding bottom. But in our original CSS, we first specify the top and bottom padding and then specify the padding. Delvin will automatically arrange all these properties. Now Delvin knows that when you specify padding after this padding top and padding bottom, this padding is going to override both these values. That is why Delvin will automatically put this padding property at the top and put this padding bottom and padding top just out of this padding statement. Now what if you want to change these statements? What if you want this padding after both these statements? You can do that with multiple apply directives. So instead of adding this padding 4 here, like this, with padding 4. Let me save this file and show you the result. You can notice, now we have padding top, padding bottom, and then we have the padding property. Now keep in mind, when you do this, your padding property will override both these properties. So keep in mind whenever you add this type of statement in your CSS file. Now, I hope you understand how apply directive works in Delvin. Now, next, let's take a look at how layer directive works in Delvin. Now, let's understand how layer directive works in Delvin CSS. As you know, we use layer directives to tell Delvin which bucket or set of custom style belongs to, or you can say on which layer you want your CSS belongs to. In the previous lecture, we understand how this works. We use layer directives and then specify the utilities. For example, if I want to add my base styling, I'm going to use here base utility. So this layer is going to put all my code inside this base utility. So if I just add here btn with the apply 
directives like this when i save the changes it's going to create a button with a padding property but when you add your class inside this base utility delvin will move this class inside the base utility classes you can do the same thing with component directives so if i just add here layer with components and if you have your padding for when you save the changes delvin is going to put this class inside the component utility right now in the output you will get both these classes one by one but when you add base component and utilities using delvin directives all these classes will put inside the css where they belong to and just after that at the end you have a utilities so if you just add here a layer with utilities you're going to have your class inside utilities section so using this layer directive we are going to inform the delvin where the styling belongs to now inside these utilities you also have a variance so if i just add here variants directives then i can add different variants inside this utilities now let's understand how variants work now let's understand how variants work in tailwind using variants you can generate responsive hover focus active and other state variants of your own utilities by wrapping their definition in the variants directives in the previous lecture we understand how you can create hover and focus variants let's see how tailwind create that classes so i'm going to add here variants and as you know with this variants you need to specify what variants you want to create with the associated classes so here i'm going to specify hover i want to create hover variant on a class called rotate zero and inside this class i'm going to simply put transform rotate zero degree let me save this file and show you the result what do you think what will be the result when i save this file delvin is going to create two classes it will first create the rotate class and then it's going to create the hover effect you can notice here how delvin create the hover variant inside their compile file he just first create the hover and then specify your class name and add the hover effect on it and now if you want to use your hover effect on any html element you can just simply put hover colon rotate zero that's it now just for that what if i want to add focus auto selector i can just simply add here a comma and then specify here focus when i save the changes you can see delvin is going to create a new class for the focus pseudo selector so now you can access this focus variant using focus prefix now it's important to note that variants are generated in the order you specify them for example let's say you want this focus before this hover then you can just simply get rid of this focus right from here and add that here you can notice the focus comes first and then we have hover now once you understand how these variants are generated let's see how responsive variants are generated you can generate responsive variants of your own classes by wrapping their definition in the responsive directives let's say you want to create responsive variant of this class you can just put this class inside responsive directives so let me just add here directives responsive and inside that you simply put your class like this delvin will automatically create responsive variants for these classes let me show you let me comment this save this file as you can see delvin will first create a class name then it's going to put your class inside different breakpoints so now you can use your class on any breakpoint so delvin will automatically create different responsive variants for your single class if you add another class here for example if i add here rotate 90 with transform property 90 degree and when you save the changes you can notice delvin will first create both these classes and then it's going to add all the responsive variants of it so inside 640 pixel we have both these classes inside 768 pixel we have both these classes and so on so you can access both these classes on different breakpoints now once you understand how directive works in delvin let's understand how functions work in delvin in delvin you have two important functions screen and theme let's look at them one by one so let's start with the screen function now let's suppose you want to create your own media query in delvin then you can use this screen function 
the screen function accept the screen name and generate the corresponding media feature expression if i just add a media query so i'm going to add here add media the css media rule and then i'm going to add here screen and this is going to be a function so i'm going to pass here parenthesis and inside this function i'm going to specify my breakpoints i want to create my own responsive variant for the rotate class so just for now i'm going to leave these parentheses as it is and in the curly braces i'm going to simply add rotate zero and inside this i'm going to simply add transform rotate zero now i want to create responsive variant for this class so i'm going to simply add media then i'm going to call this function screen and in the parentheses i need to specify for which breakpoint you want to create responsive variant of this class as you know in delvin you have different breakpoints let's suppose if i add sm breakpoint when i save the changes let me show you what would be the result when i save this file you can notice delvin is automatically going to create media query with minimum width 640 pixel and inside that you have your responsive variant of a rotate class what if i want to create a responsive variant of this class on the minimum width 768 pixel in that case i'm going to simply add here md when i save the changes you can notice i'm going to have 768 pixel media query now on documentation you will find the different breakpoints of delvin now if you don't want to use this function then you can use the screen directives as well which is going to do the same job for example let's say i want to create a media query for small size of devices then i'm going to simply add here add and then i'm going to add a directive called screen we use add the red sign as a prefix to the directives so we're going to add directive screen and then add the breakpoint sm i want to create a responsive variant for the rotate class so i'm going to add here sm breakpoint and then specify the class when i save the changes you can notice i'm going to have the same result i will recommend you to use function instead of using this directives because some css tools doesn't understand these screen directives so it's always a best practice to use screen function instead of using these directives now i hope you understand how you can create different responsive variants for your utility classes now let's understand how theme function work in telvin using theme function we can use the telvin configuration values using dot notation when you install telvin in your app telvin creates the configuration file which you can use to customize telvin using this file you can access different utility values let me show you how this work let's suppose you have a class content area to this class you have height property and to this height you have 6 rem value now when you want to change this height you need to manually open this class and then change this height unit but what if you use theme function here so instead of using this 6 rem you can use here theme and in the parenthesis you can specify the value So in the single code I'm going to specify here height dot 60. Now you might have many questions on this statement. Why I use here height? Why I use here dot instead of adding dash here like this? And why I use here 60? Let me first save this file and answer all your questions. When I save this file, it's going to create a content area with 15 RAM unit. Now instead of using h here, I'm using height. This is because we are not accessing the utility classes from this theme function. We can only access the core plugins of Delvin. So you can't use h60 because that means nothing. Theme function is going to first access the core plugin and then access its value. So height is the core plugin in Delvin and then we're going to access the property of it which is 60. Let me show you one more example. If I just search for here spacing You can notice inside the Delvin configuration file inside this theme we have the code something like this and to this core plugin we have a different values we can access all these values with dot property if you want to access all these values you need to specify dot before the core plugin when you scroll down we have default spacing scale to access this units you just need to specify the core plugin and then the property name let's suppose you want to access 8 pixel unit As you know, in JavaScript to access the key, you need to specify dot, and when you specify dot, you can access the key. So you are going to access the key one. So if I just add here spacing one, save this file, it's going to add 0.25 unit to this height. When you scroll down, you can find the key one, and to this one key, you have unit 0.25 rem, which is going to be four pixel. 
you can access different units from this section. This is what we call a keys and using these keys you can specify different units to your CSS properties. So for example if I specify 40 this will add 10 RAM to the height. So if I just add here 40 when I save the changes this will add 10 RAM height to this content area. The benefit of doing this is when you want to change the height of the content area you don't have to open your content area class inside the CSS and then change the content area height value. Instead, using customization, you can change the value of your spacing utility class. Now, what if you want to specify 10 pixel height to this content area? When you back to your Tailwind documentation, when you scroll down, if you want to specify 10 pixel height, you need to specify this 2.5 key. So if I just add here 2.5, it will add error in your code. So instead of adding dot, you can just simply add here an array like this and then add 2.5. Save this file and as you can see, you're going to have your unit. So if you need to access the value that contains dot, you can use square bracket. So I hope you understand how directives and functions are useful in Tailwind. Until now, we have been using the utility classes of Tailwind. Next, we're going to move to the advanced section where we're going to customize the Tailwind CSS configuration file. Now, from this lecture, we're going to understand the advanced topic of Telvin CSS. The best part of Telvin CSS is you can customize your CSS very easily. As you know, Telvin is a framework for building user interfaces. It has been designed for a ground up with customization in mind. When you install and use Telvin by default, Telvin will look for the optional file which is telvin.config.js at the root of your project where you can define any customization. If you don't have customization in your mind, then you don't have to create any customization file. But why do we need customization when we have a bunch of utility classes? Sometimes you need your own unique values for some CSS properties, just like for gradient colors, font families, layout size, and so on. Telvin allows us to customize it with this telvin.config.js file. So let's see how we can create this file and how we can customize different values of Telvin configuration. There are two ways you can install this file in your Telvin project. Let's look at both. So to customize Telvin, you can create a new file in the root directory of your project with the name telvinconfig.js. So inside this root directory, you can create a file with the name telvin.config.js. Using this file, you can simply customize your default configuration of Telvin. Keep in mind the extension of this configuration file is JS, which means you can customize Telvin with JavaScript. Make sure the name is exactly the same so the Telvin can find this file from your root directory. The second way you can create this file by using a simple command. Let me delete this file right from here and let's open a terminal and here I'm going to type a command npx Telvin CSS in it. This command is going to initialize and create Telvin configuration file. So when you specify this command and press enter, this will simply create telvin.config.js file. And inside this file, you have some default sections. This command will generate some boilerplate code for us. I recommend you to use this command to create the customization file in Telvin. If you want to specify your own name for this file, then you can do that as well. You can just simply specify here npx, then specify Telvin CSS, specify in it, and then specify your own name for the default file. So for example, if you want to specify your own name to this default configuration file, you can specify here name. Delvin CSS default dot JS. Now, if you want, you can specify any name here to create this file. If you want to specify your own name to this default file, you need to add post CSS and specify your Telvin as a plugin to the post CSS library. Just get rid of all this. Now, once you generate the configuration file, inside that you have different sections. Let's look at them one by one. Let's start with the first one, purge. Telvin uses the purge CSS library under the hood. The intention to add this library is to remove unused style from the production file. Purging is very important to remove unwanted style from the compile file. This library looks for classes in the HTML. It doesn't try to pass your HTML and look for the class attribute or dynamically execute your JavaScript. It simply looks for any string in the entire file. This basically matches any string separated by spaces, quotes, or angle brackets, including HTML tags, attributes, classes, and even the actual written content in your markup. Later, we will understand how we can use purge in Telvin. Next, we have dark mode. 
Using dark mode, you can convert your web app into dark mode. Many websites use toggle button to convert their website into dark mode. You can create two different themes in your website, light mode and dark mode. With this dark mode, you can convert your theme into dark mode. To make this as easy as possible, Telvin include a dark variant that lets you style your site differently when dark mode is enabled. The possible values for this is media and class. Just after that, we have theme section. This is where you can actually customize Telvin utility classes. This is where you can add your project color palette, type scale, font families, breakpoints, border radius values, and more. So using this section, you can customize the default configuration file of Delvin. Just after that, you have variants. The variant section lets you control which variants are generated for each core utility plugin. We already understand how you can create different variants for the CSS file. But now we will look at how you can generate different variants using the customization file of Delvin. Just after that, we have plugins. The plugin section allows you to register plugins with Delvin that can be used to generate extra utilities, components, base style, or custom variants. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how you can create your own plugin later in this course. So these are all important sections of Delvin configuration file. So I hope you understand the basic concepts of all these sections. Later, we're going to understand all these sections in detail. Next, we're going to talk about post CSS. Let's understand how to use post CSS with Delvin. Most of the modern web frameworks use post CSS under the hood. But what is this post CSS and why we need to use it? Post CSS is a plugin which you can use to transform CSS code or you can use it for CSS pre-processing. There are many advantages of using post CSS in your project rather than relying on a pre-processor. The advantage is that post CSS is incredibly fast. Its compile time is super fast than SAS, LESS and other pre-processors. The other advantage of using post CSS is you can add plugins into your project. You can easily extend functionalities with the ability to create your own plugin and custom functions. We pass Telvin as a plugin to this post CSS to transform the style. If you want to know more about post CSS, I will make a dedicated video on it. But just for now, just understand post CSS as a plugin. We're going to pass Telvin as a plugin to the post CSS so we can transform our CSS. So let me first install post CSS inside this project. I'm going to open my terminal and here I'm going to type the command npm i for install and then I'm going to install post CSS and auto prefixer. Now, if you don't know about auto prefixer, then it is a post CSS plugin which add vendor prefix to your CSS. Just after that, you need to add post CSS CLI. Using this post CSS CLI, we're going to compile the CSS file. Now, once you specify this command, just press enter. This is going to simply install all these three modules inside your project. So once you have these modules, just clear the screen and close the terminal. Just after that, open your package.json and here you can find you have your post CSS and post CSS CLI package. You also have your auto prefixer post CSS plugin. Now let me show you how you can use post CSS to transform the Telvin code and how you can pass Telvin as a plugin to the post CSS. As I said, post CSS is used to transform the CSS code or you can use it as a preprocessor. To use post CSS, you need to create a configuration file of post CSS, just like the Telvin configuration file. So to create post CSS configuration file, there are two ways. You can manually create that by clicking on this new file icon and specify the name for your file, which is postcss.config.js. Or you can use a command to generate this post CSS configuration file. I recommend to use a command to generate this file. So here I'm going to specify npx Telvin CSS init hyphen p. This command is going to generate two files, Telvin configuration file and the post CSS configuration file. If you already have Telvin configuration file, don't worry about that. It will not create that again. When you press enter, you can notice you have two messages here. Telvin configuration file is already exist and created post CSS configuration file with the name post css.config.js. You can notice inside the root directory, you have the post CSS config file. And we have some boilerplate code with this file. So when you open this file, you will get the code something like this. The post CSS is going to use plugin to transform the CSS code. So we're going to transform the CSS code using Telvin CSS and using auto prefixer plugins. Telvin CSS is a plugin. As I said, we're going to pass Telvin CSS as a plugin to the post CSS. So we can transform CSS. And just out of that, we also pass here auto prefixer as a plugin to the post CSS. You need to just leave everything as it is. 
just save this file and now just back to your package.json file. We are using Tailwind CSS to compile the style file. Instead of using Tailwind CSS now, we can use post CSS CLI tool. So here I'm going to specify post CSS just like this. Now we are using post CSS to compile Tailwind. Just after that, you need to get rid of this hyphen i and then specify the input file, specify hyphen o that will generate the output file. And if you want to watch the file, you can specify here hyphen w flag. Now let me save this file, open the style.css and let me split the screen and open the output file on the second screen like this. Now let me test this post CSS. What we are going to do is here I'm going to add a code dot btn and I'm going to specify apply directive of Delvin apply and we're going to add padding 3. Let me save this file and start my development server. Don't forget to start your development server, right? I'm going to just say here npm run build. We're going to have the same command to execute the post CSS, right? Let me save this file. Let me just open the style.css and run this command. When I press enter, you can notice post CSS is going to generate a new output file with the btn class. Now let me show you the benefit of using post CSS. Now there are many CSS property not supported in most of the browser. So using auto prefixer, we're going to add prefix to the properties. Let me show you. Let's suppose if we have input element with placeholder pseudo selector. Now this placeholder pseudo selector not supported in all the browsers. So if I just add here placeholder and inside this, I'm going to specify a simple property color black. Let me save the changes. You can notice auto prefixer is going to generate different version of this class. So you can see how post CSS transform your code into CSS. As you know, we use here auto prefixer plugin to transform this simple code into this. So I hope you understand how you can work with post CSS in Delvin. Now in Tailwin CSS version 2, introduce a new just-in-time compiler for Tailwind CSS that generates your style on demand. Instead of generating everything in advance at initial build time, just in time is a feature that allows you to generate CSS from your HTML file. Isn't it great? Yes, it is. Let's see how you can use this feature in Tailwin CSS. So to enable just in time compiler, just back to your Tailwin configuration file. At the top, you just need to say here mode. In the single code, you need to specify JIT. Just in time. Since JIT mode generate your CSS on demand by scanning your template file, it's crucial that you configure the purge option in your Tailwind configuration file. Using this purge option, Tailwind will scan your template paths. Inside this purge option, we specify the template path. If we don't have anything here, Tailwind will not create any CSS code. As I said earlier, Tailwind will not search for the class attribute. Instead, he search for the double code inside your HTML to identify the class names. Now let's see how we can work with this JIT compiler, or you can say just in time compiler. Just back to your package.json file. And here you can notice I have my auto prefixer, post CSS, post CLI, and Tailwind CSS. You need Tailwind CSS and post CLI to compile your Tailwind with JIT. So once you have all these packages, inside this purge, you need to specify your template path. So I'm going to specify here single code. As you know, this is a type of array. So we're going to pass here first array, which is going to be dot forward slash. Then I'm going to specify here public folder. Then I'm going to specify all the files inside that like this. And then I'm going to specify here asterisk dot and in this curly braces, I'm going to specify HTML and JS. The meaning of this statement is search for all the files inside this public folder. If we have folder inside it, search all the files inside that folder as well. And inside that folder, scan all the HTML and JS files. Just sort of that, if this statement doesn't work for you, you can just add here another statement, which is like public forward slash index dot HTML. Now I'm using your public folder because my index file is in the public folder. If you have your HTML file in different folder, you can specify that folder name here. Now using this statement, we're going to inform Tailwind to scan all the HTML files from the public folder to generate CSS code. So once you've done that, just back to the package.json file 
let me save this file open my terminal and here I'm going to type a command call npm run build when I execute this command you can see you're going to have here a warning you have enabled the GID engine which is currently in preview so once you've done that just close this file and back to your style.css here you need to add three directives of Tailwind which is base component and utilities so let me just add that so from this installation here I'm gonna grab these three directives and specify that here right now inside this output.css I don't have anything you can notice but when I save this file this will generate this output.css and I'm gonna have all my code here but this time you can notice I'm gonna have only 500 line of code now just a time compiler will remove all the unwanted styles from your code so you're just going to have 500 lines of code inside your output file now let me show you the magic of GIT I'm gonna just back to the HTML you can notice here inside my HTML here I'm gonna have BG Indigo 300 let me get it off this hour when I save this file it will generate this BG Indigo inside my output file but what if I add here another class for example if I add here padding 4 when I save this file, you can notice JIT will automatically create that class inside my output file. I don't need to create that class manually. For example, if I add here underline utility class of Telvin, when I save this file, Telvin will generate the underline class for you as well. Now, what if I remove both these classes? When I save the changes, you can notice Telvin will not remove both these classes because this is just for a development. When you rebuild your CSS file, Delvin will remove both these classes from this output file. Let me show you. If I just save this Delvin config file, you can notice once I save this Delvin config file, Delvin will remove both that classes from this output file. Now let me show you how you can use sudo selector with Delvin JIT. So if I just paste over here disabled opacity 75, when I save the changes, you can notice Delvin will create disable sudo selector with the class opacity 75 and you're gonna have opacity 0.75 to this class the another benefit of using GIT is you can specify your own values to the utilities then the Telvin will create that class with your own value for example let's suppose you want to specify height to this button you use here height 4 when you save the changes you're gonna have height with one rem now Telvin already have this unit inside the Telvin configuration file but what if you want to specify your own value to this height property in that case you can specify here bracket like this the array square bracket and inside that you can specify your value for example if I want to specify 33 pixel height to this button when I save this file you can see Telvin will create height with 33 pixel unit now if you want to remove these unwanted classes you can just save this Delvin config that will remove all that unwanted classes now what if you want to specify background color to this button you can just simply use here BG and then in the square bracket you can specify your color so if I specify here hex value when I save this file Delvin will create the background color with the RGBA value you can notice here now let's suppose if I specify here font bold and I want to apply the second class to this button so for example if I want to specify here font medium to this button then I can specify here exclamation mark so that will add Im important keyword to the CSS property let me show you when I save the changes you can see to the font medium we have here important keyword so your browser will override the previous property with this CSS so you can use this exclamation mark to any class that's upon you now just out of that what if if I specify here SM the breakpoint then I'm going to specify hover effect on it and then I'm going to call here font bold what do you think what would be the result when I save this file you can notice let me just get it off this files right from here now when I save this file it's going to create the media query with 640 pixel breakpoint and inside that we have hover effect on font bold so using this single statement Telvin will automatically create this CSS code for us 
you don't need to write anything now just out of that if you want you can manage the background color opacity with this jit compiler for example if i specify here bg red 500 it will create the bg red class with the rgb background color but what if you want to specify opacity to it you can just specify here forward slash and then specify 25 percent when you save this file you can notice we have the opacity 0.25 to this color now jit compiler is a new feature in tailwind and it is under preview so i recommend you to use this feature after preview i hope you understand how you can easily create your css code using html now let's take a look at the theme section of the configuration file now we all know the basic understanding of these sections in the previous lecture we understand how you can use purging now let's understand how you can use this theme section we will look at this dark mode later in this course let's see how you can use this theme section of this configuration file this is the main section of this configuration file using this section you can customize and extend the tailwind feature so let me show you how you can do it now let's suppose you have a button inside your style.css so for example if i create here a button a button class and to this button i have the apply directives and to this button i have text center utility class with sm text left with md text right and with lg text center now let me show you the result when i save this file so if i open my output file right here when i save this file you can notice telvin is going to create a button class and inside that we're going to have text align center and then we have the different media queries here this is the sm breakpoint this is the md breakpoint and this is the lg breakpoint you can notice inside this code i use here sm md and lg we already have values to these breakpoints sm use 640 pixel md use 768 pixel and lg use 1024 pixel what if i want to change this breakpoint value so to do that you need to use the telvin configuration file theme section so let me show you how you can change it so inside this theme here you need to add screen core plugin don't forget to add here comma because this is a type of object then inside the screen here i can add a key called sm colon and then i'm going to specify the value i want to specify to the sm breakpoint i want to specify 600 pixel to the sm breakpoint just after that here i'm going to specify comma and specify md breakpoint as well so i'm going to specify md 700 pixel now you can notice for the md breakpoint we have 768 pixel i want to change that and specify 700 pixel here and at the last i'm going to specify lg breakpoint which is going to be 900 pixel and at the end i'm going to specify xl breakpoint which is going to be 1400 pixel now let me save this file and show you the result now just take a closer look at this media breakpoints we have 640 768 and 1024 when i save this file as you can see here i'm going to have 600 700 and 900 breakpoints so now you can see we just change the breakpoint values using this delvin theme configuration if you want you can specify any values here that's about you so using this theme section you're going to change the default values of delvin configuration so we just use here screen plugin to change some breakpoints now you are not limited to only use this screen plugin there are many plugins in Telvin. For example, color. You can change the default color palette of Telvin. If I just add here comma, and then I'm gonna add here colors, and in the curly braces, I'm gonna specify here my color palette. So I'm gonna say here indigo, specify colon. I'm using the indigo key of this core color plugin. Inside this core color plugin, we have indigo key. And to this indigo, I'm gonna specify light color so i'm going to say here light and then i'm going to specify hex value here i can do the same for the default and dark color so i'm going to just specify that here like this so i'm going to specify default key and a dark key inside the color palette now let me show you how you can use this when you save this file and back to your style.css here instead of this text center and all these classes and here i'm going to use text indigo this will add the button with the color indigo and if i add here text indigo dark 
then this will just initialize this button with this dark color we already changed this color value inside this tailwind configuration so this will just use this color here inside this button if you want you can specify this color with sm breakpoint as well if i specify here sm specify colon when you save the changes you can notice you're going to have your breakpoint value and your color you can also customize the spacing we have a bunch of spacing keys for specifying different units to the utility classes. Let me show you how you can use them. Just search for spacing and here you can find the spacing page. From here you can find more about spacing. Using spacing, you can specify different units to your utility classes. By default, spacing scale is inherited by the padding, margin, width, max height, gap, inset, space and translate core plugins. So all these core plugins use these spacing units. Now let me show you how the spacing units work. Spacing scale is inherited by padding. So for example, if you want to use 12 pixel padding, you need to just back to your style sheet and here you need to specify padding and then specify the unit name, which is three. So if I specify here three, when you save the changes, you're going to have 0.75 RAM padding to your button. You can notice we have this padding 0.75 RAM, which is equal to 12 pixel. If you want, you can specify any spacing from this scale. So if you want to specify 40 pixel, you can specify 10 to the padding, just like this. When you save the changes, you're going to have 2.5 RAM padding to this button. So padding and other plugins use this spacing scale to specify unit to the CSS properties. Now let me show you how you can specify your own unit to this scaling. Let's suppose you want to change first scale unit you don't want this 0.25 rem you want here 0.35 rem in that case you can add this scaling inside your tailwind configuration so if you just back to your tailwind config you can just add here just after this color right down here you can add spacing and in this curly braces you can specify different keys or you can say different name you can notice we have different names here I just want to change the value of this first name. So I'm going to specify here 1, then specify colon, and I want to specify 0.35 RAM to this one. So in the single code, I'm going to specify 0.35 RAM. Now let me save this file and back to the style.css, and here I'm going to use 1. When I save the changes, you can notice I'm going to have now 0.35 RAM. Now what if I use here 2? So if I just specify here P2, save the changes, I'm not going to get anything here because when you open the terminal, you can notice you're going to have here error message. So to solve this error, just remove this spacing from here like this, save this file. And as you can see, you're going to have 0.5 RAM padding to this button. Back to your Tailwind configuration, add the spacing again. And this time, instead of one, I'm going to add here two. And as you know, we have 0.5 RAM to this to padding so to the second unit instead of 0.5 i'm going to specify 0.75 ram let me save the changes and show you the result when i save this file as you can see right now i'm going to have padding 0.75 ram if i want to use this 1.5 ram so if i specify here 5 when i save the changes i'm going to get an error message because you override the default tailwind configuration file with yours now there are many core plugins you can find in Tailwind documentation, so you can customize it. Now as you can see, when you specify code inside this theme key, it's going to override the previous object. Now let me show you how you can extend the Tailwind feature. So next, I'm going to show you how you can extend the features of Tailwind configuration file. Now, in the previous lecture, we understand how you can change the default utility classes values using this theme section. Now let's take a look at how you can extend the default configuration file of Tailwind. By default, your project will automatically inherit the values from the default theme configuration. In the previous lecture, we created this screen section inside this theme. Now what if you want to create your own breakpoint inside Tailwind? To do that, you can use the extend feature of Tailwind. So instead of adding your screens inside this theme section, you can add that inside the extend section. When you scroll down, you can notice you have your extend. You can add your own breakpoint inside this extend section. 
Using this extend, you can extend the default configuration of Delvin. So let me just get rid of all this code right from here. Don't worry, you can get this code from the lecture 13. Just check out the Git repo on lecture 13. You will get this code. I'm going to get rid of this code. And here, I'm going to extend the default configuration file of Delvin. What I want, I want to create my own breakpoint. So I'm going to simply add here screens. Make sure you add S, specified colon, and pass curly braces. I can use here SM because we already have this breakpoint inside Delvin configuration. So instead of SM, here I'm going to create my own breakpoint. So I'm going to name this breakpoint 3XL. If you want, you can specify any name to this breakpoint. That's upon you. Just for that, make sure you specify this breakpoint inside single code. So Delvin will create this breakpoint as a key. Specify colon and then specify a single code again. And here you need to specify your value. So for example, for this breakpoint, I'm going to specify 1600 pixel. Let me save this file and back to my style.css. As you know, we have the output file here on the right side. And here inside this left side, I have my input style.css. What if I create here a class content and inside this class, I'm going to use my breakpoint. So here I'm going to add apply. I'm going to call apply directive of Delvin. And then I'm going to add here my breakpoint first. And then I'm going to add here text center. As you know, when I save the changes, it's going to create a content class with text center property. Now, what if I want to use my own breakpoint here? So I'm going to use here 3XL colon, and then I'm going to specify text left. When I save the changes, you can see Delvin is going to create a media query with minimum with 1600. You can notice here, I have this 1600 unit to this 3XL breakpoint. So Telvin is going to create your own breakpoint with just a one line of code. You can use this breakpoint with any utility classes. Telvin will automatically create that. For example, if I use here font bold, save this file, you can see. So that's easy, right? To extend the default configuration of Telvin. You just need to specify the core plugin of Telvin and then you need to extend that with your own values. Now, what if you want to extend the color palette of Telvin? You can just specify comma here and then add your color palette so here i'm going to simply specify colors specify colon and pass here curly braces inside the single code i'm going to specify regal blue and then i'm going to specify my color value here so for example if i specify hex value and just out of that i'm going to save this file back to the style.css and now i want to use this color so i'm going to just simply add that color here so i'm going to add apply directive again and on the second line, I'm going to use this color. So to use this color, Delvin use text prefix to all the colors. So when you add this regal blue, Delvin is going to specify text prefix to all your custom colors and you can access your key using text prefix. To access the colors, you need to specify text prefix with a color name. If I want to access indigo color, I can just simply add here text indigo and then I can specify the values of it. So I'm going to have here a content with this value. Now just for that, now what I want, I want to use my own keys or you can say my own color inside this style sheet. So instead of this indigo here, I'm going to use this regal blue. So I'm going to just specify that here, save this file. Right now, I'm going to have this regal blue color in RGB alpha color. That's super easy. Now if you want, you can create here different values to these colors. Just like you can specify different shades, you can specify different opacity and all that. You can add your own custom colors inside this color plugin. Now, just for that, as you know, in Tailwind, we have spacing scale to add units to different utility classes. In the previous lecture, we already learned that. In the previous lecture, we understand how you can use spacing scale. Using spacing scale, Tailwind is going to specify different units to the padding, to the heights, width, and so on. Now, inside the Tailwind documentation, here I'm going to search for spacing. We all know that using this spacing scale, we can access the spacing scale to generate a different utility values. For example, if I want to specify 12 pixel padding, then I can just simply back to my style or CSS. And here I'm going to simply specify padding and then I'm going to specify here three. So when I specify here three, I'm going to have 12 pixel padding to this content, right? 0 0.75 RAM is equal to 12 pixel. So you can notice there are different core plugins extend this spacing. You can access all these units in all these core plugins. For example, you can use this in padding, margin, width, height, max height, gap, 
insert space and translate you can use all these units inside this inherited core plugins now you can notice inside this scale you have only 96 units what if you want to add your own so to do that you can just back to the tailwind configuration file here you can add comma and then specify here spacing specify colon and in the curly braces you can add your own spacing scale and here inside the spacing i'm going to specify key and values you can notice here we don't have 13 inside this spacing scale we have 11 12 but we don't have 13 i want to add my own 13 unit so here i'm going to add single quote and then specify 13 specify colon and then i'm going to specify my own value here so i'm going to specify here 3.25 rem i can do the same and add another here so if i add 15 then i can specify value to it 3.75 rem that's upon you you can add multiple keys here now let me show you how you can use this to this 13 we specify 3.25 rem so what if i specify here 13 let me show you what would happen when i save those changes when i save those changes you can notice i'm going to have 3.25 rem to this padding so now i have these keys inside my Delvin configuration. So we are just extending the feature of Delvin using this spacing core plugin. You can notice we just have 96. After that, we don't have any key. So what if I specify 144 to this padding? If I specify 144, as you can see, we have 36 RAM to this 144. So when I save this file, you can see I'm gonna have 36 RAM to this padding. So you can notice how easy it is to extend Delvin default configuration file. You're not limited to add your objects inside this file. If you want, you can create a dedicated file for these objects. And then you can import that file inside this Delvin configuration and use that object here. That's completely upon you. Now keep in mind, you're not limited to use these values with padding. You can use these values with margin, width, height, max height, gap, and all these inherited core plugins. Now, I hope you understand how you can extend the default configuration file of Delvin. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use this variant section. Now, let's take a look at how you can use this variant section of this default configuration file of Delvin. Using this variant section, you can add different variants or you can say different pseudo selectors to your Delvin utility classes. There are a few variants are enabled by default, but if you want, you can extend that variance feature. If you open the documentation, here you can find the variants section. Just click on it. Here you can notice you have different variants here. Responsive, dark, motion safe, and so on. You can enable any of these variants using the configuration file. When you scroll down, you can notice here you have different plugins. You already have some default variants to these plugins. Let's take this background color. To this background color, we have responsive, dark, group hover, focus within, hover, and focus. Now, what if you want to specify active variant to this background color? To do that, you can use this variants section. Now, for example, if I add here a class called BG content, and then inside this, I'm going to use apply. And let me just show you how you can use these variants. So, for example, I'm going to use this default variant, which is the hover variant. So, if I say here hover colon BG indigo 400, and I save this file. I'm going to have the BG content with hover pseudo selector. In Telvin configuration, the hover effect is by default enabled. You can notice here. By default, we have hover variant to this background color. What if you want to add your own variant here? For example, if I add active variant, so if I specify here active, when I save the changes, you're not going to get anything. But if you open your terminal, you will get an error message on active variants because you don't have active variants to this background color. So to add this variant to your background color, you can just back to the Delvin configuration file and inside this extend right here inside this variant, you can add simple background color or from the documentation, you can copy this key and specify that here and then specify colon and in the array, you need to specify your variant. So I want to add active variant. So I'm going to specify here active. Let me save this file back to my style.css and save this file as well. Now, you can see, I'm gonna have here active variant. I can use this pseudo selector with this background color. Now, you're not limited to only use this active with this indigo color. Instead, you can use this active variant to 
any color of background. So from this documentation, you can find different plugins and you can enable different variants. Let me show you one more example. Just scroll down. Here you can find text color. To the text color, we have responsive, dark, group hover, focus within, hover and focus. What if you want to add visited pseudo select or you can say variants to this text color. In that case, you need to add that inside the Tailwind configuration. So if I use here visited colon and then specify text color. So if I specify here text blue, when I open my terminal, I'm going to get an error message here because I don't have this variant to this utility class. I need to add that inside a configuration file. So here I can add a comma and then specify here text color plugin. So you can just back to the documentation and you can copy this text color key and specify that here. And inside the bracket, you can add visited. Now you're not limited to only add one or two variants here. You can add different variants inside this array. So when I save the file and back to the style.css and for example, if I change this color text indigo 300, save this file, you can notice I'm going to have visited pseudo selector to this text color. Now you're not limited to only use this color. If you want to use red color here, red, red 400. When I save this file, you're going to have that color with a visited pseudo selector. Inside this documentation, you can find different plugins. Now when you scroll up, here you can notice when you specify your variant to the plugin, it's going to generate the CSS something like this. Now you can notice the order of these variants. When you specify focus first, Tailwind is going to create the focus pseudo selector first and then create the hover. When you specify hover, it's going to create hover first and then create the focus. You can see the difference. Now if you want to order the variants, you can use the variant order key. You don't have to worry about this. So once you understand how you can work with variants inside Tailwind configuration, let's move to the next section where we're going to understand how you can create your own plugin in Tailwind. This is going to be the very interesting part of this complete course. So let's see how you can create your own plugin in Tailwind. Now, once you understand all these sections, let's take a look at how you can create your own plugins in Tailwind application. Plugins is one of the most interesting part of Tailwind configuration. And this is my favorite section as well. Now, in this lecture, we're going to take a look at how you can create your own plugin in Tailwind CSS. There are many core plugins you will get with Tailwind framework. You can find all that pre-built plugins inside a Tailwind documentation. Right now, we are creating our own plugin. So Tailwind allows us to extend the Tailwind with reusable plugins. Plugin lets you register a new style for Tailwind project to inject into user style sheet using JavaScript instead of CSS. We all know using this style or CSS, we can add our own styling inside the Tailwind configuration. But you can do the same thing with JavaScript. There are many pre-built plugins you can get with Tailwind. For example, you can get Tailwind typography, forms, line clamp, and aspect ratio. You can require all these plugins inside your Tailwind application. These are pre-built plugins and you can use them for different purpose. Let me show you how you can create your own plugin for your web application. To create your own plugin in Tailwind, you need to first require a function called plugin from Tailwind. So you just need to add here a require statement at the top, constant, then call a plugin here and then specify require function. Using require, you can call plugin function from the different module. So you just need to specify here single code and specify here Tailwind CSS. And from Tailwind CSS, you need to call this file plugin. You need to call this plugin and this is going to return a function. We're going to use this function to create a new plugin. We already have a plugin function. Using that, you can create your own plugin in Tailwind. So once you require this plugin, you can use that inside this array. So inside this array right here, I'm going to add this plugin function like this. And as you know, to the function, we pass parentheses. Just for that, this function is going to take a function as a parameter. So inside this parentheses, here I'm going to pass a function like this. And this function is going to take an argument of these plugins. So inside this parenthesis, you can pass different helper functions. Using that helper functions, you can create your own utilities, components, and base classes. This is a simple syntax of plugin. You will get different arguments with this function. 
we're going to have add utilities, add components, add base, add variants, and so on. You can find more about these arguments inside a Tailwind documentation. So we're going to understand all that arguments one by one. So let's start with the first one. So inside this parenthesis, here I'm going to add add utilities argument. So what you need to do is you need to destructure all the argument inside an object. So here you need to pass object and then you need to specify add utilities like this. This plugin function is going to take a function as a parameter and to this function we pass destructure arguments. Now in this example, I want to create my own utility. So I'm going to pass here add utilities. If you open your Tailwind documentation, when you click on the plugins, here you can find we have add utilities, add components, add base and so on. We have different arguments to this utility function. You can specify all these arguments inside an object. This is what we call a destructuring. So now let's first understand how you can create own utilities. So I'm going to add here add utilities. Keep in mind this is a type of function. So I'm going to pass here add utilities and pass parenthesis here. And in this parenthesis you need to specify your own utilities. Now we are creating our own utilities. So at the top instead of passing object inside this parenthesis I'm going to create a new object here constant new utilities like this and I'm going to pass this object right here. If you want you can create this object inside this parenthesis as well but I will recommend you to create a new variable for that and pass that variable name inside this parenthesis. Just out of that inside this new utilities you need to specify your own utility classes. So for example if I want to create scale utility class then I'm going to specify here dot scale one then I'm going to specify colon and pass curly braces. Inside this I'm going to specify properties so I'm going to say here transform colon and then pass value which is going to be scale one. You can notice how easy it is to create a new utility in the plugin. This will simply create a new utility in Tailwind. When I save the changes and recompile my project I'm going to have scale one utilities in my Tailwind. Let me show you. If I just save this file back to my style.css and here I'm going to create a new class new btn and inside this I'm going to call apply directives and I'm going to access the class called scale one. So I'm going to access this class right here like this. Let me split this window and on the right side here I'm going to open my output file. Right now I don't have anything inside this output file but when I save this style.css you can notice Tailwind is going to create a new class new btn and I'm going to have transform scale one to this new btn. Now you're not limited to only create one or two utilities. If you want you can create multiple utilities as well. For example if you want to create another utility here you can specify here comma and then specify the new utility name. So for example if I specify here single quote and specify dot rotate one make sure you specify dot before the name of this class. This is just like you create a class in CSS. So we just create a class specify colon and pass values to it using curly braces. Inside this curly braces this time I'm going to specify transform colon in the single quote I'm going to specify rotate one. Let me save this file back to my style.css and just after this scale I'm going to simply use this rotate one class. So I'm going to just specify that here. Save this file. As you can see I'm going to have transform rotate to this new btn. Now that's easy right to create your own utilities in Tailwind. Now let's suppose you want to add variants with your utility classes. Then you can just add variants as a second argument to this add utilities. If I just back to my style.css and if I try to add here hover effect and when I save this file Tailwind will not going to do anything. Instead you will get an error message inside your terminal because you don't have this hover variant to your own utility class. So to add that you can just specify second argument to this add utilities. So here you can simply pass comma and pass here an object. Inside this object you can pass variants. So here I'm going to add variants colon and in the array you can pass your different variants here. So I'm going to pass here two variants which is responsive and hover in the single quote. Make sure you add your both variants inside a single quote. Now you have responsive and hover variants to your utility classes. Let me show you. When I save the changes you can notice Delvin is going to create a new class with your hover effect. Let me just back to the style.css and if I add here sm 
tailwind is going to put this rotate inside a breakpoint. When I save the changes, you can see we have the SM media query and inside that we have this class. That's super easy, right? Now, if you want, you can add different variants here inside this array. You can create a dedicated file for the utility classes and add that inside this plugin. So I hope you understand how you can add your own utilities using plugin. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create your own components. Now, let's take a look at how you can create your own components in the Tailwind application using plugins. Now, to create your own component, you just need to add a request statement and call a plugin function. And just call that plugin function inside this plugin section. Here, you just need to pass the function and pass different arguments to it. We already learned this syntax in the previous lecture. Now, let's add another helper function here, which is going to be add component. Using this helper function, we can create different components inside the Tailwind application. The add component helper function allows you to register a new style in Tailwind component layer. If you're using a component that you can use multiple times in your project, then you can create your own component. We already learned the basics of component in the previous lectures. Now, let's see how you can create your own components inside this plugin. I'm going to add this add components function. So just down here, I'm going to say add components and pass parenthesis here because this is a helper function. And to this helper function, I'm going to pass object. I'm going to create a constant variable button is equal to and then I'm going to pass here object. And inside this parenthesis, here I'm going to pass button. Just after that, let me create a new component here. So in the single code, I'm going to specify btn button then specify colon and pass curly braces here. Just hard that, I'm going to pass some properties here. I'm going to pass padding and then I'm going to say dot five ram and one ram. So this is just like you create CSS inside your dot CSS file. Just hard that, I'm going to add some font width. So I'm going to add font width. Then specify colon and then I'm going to specify some values here. You can notice how I use this font width property inside this add plugins. Now, because this is a core plugin of Tailwind, I can use font width without the dash. If you want to use any CSS properties inside a JavaScript, you can use camel case syntax. Just out of that, what if you want to create hover effect to this button? You can do that as well. Here, if I specify comma and then specify dot btn blue, if I create another class, btn blue, and then specify some CSS properties to it. I'm going to specify color and then add some hex color here, like this. Just after that, I'm going to add hover effect to this btn blue. So I can just simply add a single code and then I can add here ampersand colon hover. And then I'm going to pass CSS properties here. You can notice how I use hover effect here. This is a type of SAS syntax. Inside SAS, we use ampersand. This refers to the current class. So this and is refers to this current btn blue class. So to this btn blues, we create hover effect. So inside this hover, I can specify color like this. Save this file and now you can use this btn and btn blue inside your style.css. So here I can simply add component and then specify apply and then specify here apply directives dot btn and you have here btn blue. So I'm going to specify both these classes here like this. Let me save this file. When I save the changes, you can notice I'm going to have both these classes inside my compile output file. You can see I have the hover effect on this component. You can notice. Now, what if you want to create variants for these components? For example, if I specify here hover, then I'm going to get an error message because I don't have this hover variant to this BTN component. So to add that hover variant to this BTN, you can just simply add here a second argument like this as an object and add here variants and in the array you can pass hover when i save this file back to the style sheet and save this file as well you can see i'm going to have hover effect to this btn as well so i'm going to have all these properties inside hover pseudo selector and if you want you can add multiple variants inside this array that's upon you now you're not limited to only add variants as an object to this add component or to the add utilities you can access this variant section as well inside this plugin. You can just simply add an argument here, which is going to be the variants, like this. And you can access the variants section using this argument. Let me show you. If I just add a 
a key here which is going to be the custom plugin colon and in the array I'm going to specify single quote and say responsive I'm going to add a responsive variant and add hover variant like this don't forget to add comma between two different objects because this is a type of object to start that instead of this object I can just simply pass here variants this helper function and in the parenthesis in the single code I can pass this key custom plugin like this so now I'm gonna have the responsive and hover variant to this component classes when I save the file I'm gonna have the same result but if I add here SM like this then I'm gonna have the responsive variant as well to this BTN blow you can notice now you can use this custom plugin key to specify different variants to your different plugins you just need to add a helper function to your plugin which is going to be the variants and then pass that as a second argument to the add component or you can add that to the add utilities as well that's easy right now just for that let's suppose you want to add your own prefix to your components for example let's say you want to specify your own classes with dt prefix so if you want to add btn you can just add that with dt prefix like this so all the classes in Telvin is going to have the dt prefix so if I just add here inside this Telvin configuration if I add another section which is going to be prefix like this in the single code I can add here dt and specify hyphen now I can access all the Telvin classes with dt prefix back to the style.css let me show you what happened if I get rid of all this code and add this btn class without dt prefix when I save the changes I'm not gonna get anything because I'm gonna have an error inside my terminal because we don't have this btn component inside the tailwind so to access this btn you need to add this prefix which is a dt so before this btn you need to add a dt and specify hyphen when I save the changes I can access the btn component using dt prefix I specify here dt means daily tuition that's upon you you can specify any extension here like Delvin or TD or anything that's upon you but keep in mind whenever you specify prefix to your Delvin configuration file you can access all the utility classes of Delvin with your prefix so I hope you understand how you can create your own component and specify that with prefix next I'm going to show you how you can use base function argument of this plugin function Now let's take a look at how you can create a base utilities inside Telvin. So let me just add here a new argument to this function to create our own base classes or you can say base utilities. Here I'm going to add an argument which is add base. Using this add base helper function we can create base utility classes. So using this add base helper function Telvin allows us to register a new style in Telvin base layer directives in the previous lecture we understand how you can add add component using that function we register all the components inside a component directives and using add utilities we add all the custom utilities inside utilities layer add base allows us to register a new style inside base layer as you know we have three different layers in Delvin base component and utilities so we're gonna add a new layer inside base using this add base helper function you can use it to add things like base typography style, font face rules and so on. You know that in Telvin, all the heading level elements have the same font size. For example, if I open my HTML and here if I add all the heading level elements of HTML like this and if I open this in my browser, let me just back to the style.css and here I'm going to add three directives which is base, component and utilities when I save these changes back to my HTML save this file as well and open this file in the live server as you can see we have same font width and font size to all these heading level elements what if you want to specify different font families to these heading level elements in that case you can add your own base styling inside the base layer so using plugin you can easily do that just add a plugin with a function as an argument and to this function we pass a destructure values so we pass here add base which is the helper function 
and i'm going to use that to specify different values to the heading level elements so here i'm going to specify a constant variable headings is equal to and pass here an object and i'm going to pass this heading to this add base function so i'm going to add this add base right here and in the parenthesis i'm going to add heading variable this one and just for that inside this object i can just simply add single code and say h1 now keep in mind this is the base styling so you don't need to specify here dot because this is not a utilities or any component this is a base styling you specify styling to the html element so we just specify here h1 specify here colon and in the curly braces i'm going to specify font size now you can notice this is the wrong statement in javascript to add font size you need to get rid of this dash and add here camel case syntax like this and then specify colon in the single quote specify your value 20 pixel i'm going to do the same so i'm going to copy this statement paste it down here and paste it down here instead of h1 i'm going to specify h2 here and then i'm going to decrease this value to 15 pixel this became 10 pixel and this is going to be h3 that's it let me just save this file back to my page and as you can see I'm going to have different font size to all these heading level elements. So Telvin is going to add this base styling inside the base layer. So using this helper function, you can change the default styling of your HTML element. Now, just for that, if you want, instead of specifying these hard coded values here, you can use the theme configuration values as well. Plugins allows you to use theme configuration values or you can say units inside your plugin. Let me show you how you can use it. Right here, I'm going to pass a function theme. Using this theme, you can access different core plugins. This is going to give the access of this theme section. So using this theme, we can access different core plugins. So instead of these hard-coded values here, we can just simply get rid of these hard-coded values. Pass here a theme function like this. And in the single quote, I'm going to specify the core plugin, which is font size. And we have different units to this font size utility class. So I'm going to specify here dot 2xl. This is going to specify 2xl unit size to this h1 heading tag. I'm going to do the same for this h2 as well. Here I'm going to specify theme, then specify font size dot xl. And this time to this h3, I'm going to specify theme, font size dot lg let me save the changes and show you the result as you can see i'm going to have different font size to all these heading level elements now you're not limited to only use font size core plugin inside this theme you can use the spacing scale as well for example if you open the telvin documentation and just search for spacing just click on this customizing spacing and here you can notice we have a different spacing scale you can specify any of this unit to your font size. So for example, if you want to specify 24 pixel font size, you can use this six key. So you can use that spacing here inside this theme. So for example, if I want to specify 24 pixel font size to this H1 heading tag, here I'm going to specify spacing dot six. Save this file. And as you can see, when you inspect this to this H1 heading tag, you can see you have 1.5 RAM unit, which is equal to 24 pixel. You can use any unit from this spacing. You are not limited to just specify these units. You can specify any units from any utility classes. Now, I hope you understand how you can add your own base styling inside base layer. Next, we're gonna understand how you can create your own preset inside Telvin CSS. Now, let's take a look at how you can use preset inside Delvin. Now inside this default configuration file, you will not get a preset section, but you can add that preset section by adding a new section inside this Delvin configuration file. Here you can add preset just like this. Now what is preset? We all know using Delvin configuration file, we can customize and extend the Delvin CSS feature. But what if you want to create your own configuration file which you can use across multiple projects? The preset option lets you specify a different configuration to use as your base. 
making it easy to package up a set of customization that you would like to reuse across projects. So basically using presets, you can create your own configuration file and use that in multiple projects. And then you can specify that base styling to the main Tailwind configuration file. Let me show you what I want to say. For example, let's say I want to extend the padding utilities of Tailwind. I can just simply add here padding like this. And then I'm going to specify my own key here. So if I just specify here 4.5 and I'm going to specify here value 4.5 RAM, then Tailwind is going to create a new padding utilities. But what I want, instead of adding everything inside this configuration file, I can use preset. Using preset, you, you can add your base styling, components and utilities and add that preset inside this main Tailwind configuration. So what we're going to do is, we're going to create a new folder inside the root directory right here. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it preset. If you want, you can specify any name to this folder. Inside this, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to name this file tailwind.preset.js. Now, if you want, you can specify any name to this file. This is just a mimic of Tailwind configuration file. Just out of that, here I'm going to simply copy all this code from this configuration file and paste that here inside this preset. I just heard that I'm going to get rid of this purge and dark mode right from here. Then I'm going to get rid of this variance, these presets and all these sections right from here like this and save this file. Now, instead of this padding, I can just simply use this preset inside the main Telvin configuration. So if I add this preset inside this preset section, I can use this extended padding inside my style.css. So Telvin is going to create this utility class inside Telvin when I add this preset inside this default configuration. Now you are not limited to only extend the theme inside preset. If you want, you can add variants just like you add that inside the configuration. So for example, if you add your own preset, you can just copy this preset and specify that here. And if you want, you can add plugins as well. So you can just copy your plugins, specify that here. And here you can add different plugins. So this is just a mimic of your default configuration file. But instead of adding all the code inside this Tailwind configuration file, we're going to create our own preset and specify that preset to this configuration. So for example, if I want to add these utilities inside Tailwind, I can just back to the default configuration file of Tailwind. And then inside this preset section, here I'm going to pass require statement. So I'm going to say here require in the parentheses, I'm going to specify dot forward slash and then specify here preset folder. And then I'm going to specify Telvin preset file. That's it. Now I can use this 4.5 padding inside my style.css. So if I just specify here dot preset apply padding 4.5, when I save this file, inside my output as you can see i'm going to have preset with a padding 4.5 so i'm just extending the feature of telvin configuration file using preset i don't need to add any code inside the default configuration file i just going to add everything inside this preset so i can use that in multiple projects and then i'm going to just require that inside this preset section now you're not limited to only extend the default configuration using preset if you want, you can change the values using this theme section. You can add different variants inside this preset or you can add different plugins inside it. So preset allows us to create our own default configuration file, which we can use in different projects. So now I hope you understand how you can create your own preset file inside Telvin. Next, we're going to take a look at the dark mode of Telvin. Now, let's take a look at how you can use this dark mode section of Delvin. In many modern web applications, dark mode is very popular. Using it, you can switch the light mode into dark mode. Dark mode is a first class feature of many operating system. Using dark mode, you could have two different modes for your web app, light and dark. And with just one click, user can convert the light mode into dark or dark into light. Now, let's take a look at how you can use this section in Delvin. So as you can see, with a default configuration file, you will get false value to this dark mode. You can get two values with this dark mode, which is media and a class. If you use media here like this, 
then whenever the dark mode is enabled on your user operating system, dark classes will take precedence over unprefix classes. That means any class with a dark prefix will take precedence over unprefix classes. We are not using media in this tutorial because if you want more control over dark mode, you can use class value. So instead of media, we use here class. Using class, you have more control over dark mode. Let me show you how. Let me save this file and back to my HTML. Here, I'm going to create a new HTML structure. I'm going to simply create a division tab. And to this div, I'm going to pass some classes. I'm going to first specify BG white. This is going to specify white background to this division tag. Then I'm going to add here BG gray 800. This is going to specify background color to this division tag. But as a prefix, we specify here dark. So this class is only applied to this division tag when I enable the dark mode. Later, I will show you how you can enable the dark mode. But just for now, just create this division tag with two classes, BG white and BG gray 800 with dark prefix. Inside this div, here I'm going to add H1 heading tag and I'm going to add dark mode is here text. And to this H1, I'm going to specify some classes. So I'm going to add text gray 900. And as a dark class, I'm going to specify here dark prefix and then I'm going to specify text white just out of that i'm going to specify here a paragraph with lorem 10 so i'm going to have 10 demo lorem word here i'm going to specify class to it class is going to be text gray 900 and dark is going to be text white now let me just save this file back to my style.css and get rid of this preset class from here and let me add my directives base component and utilities save this file back to my index.html let me save this file if i open the index.html in the browser i'm going to have the results something like this right now the dark mode is disabled means all these html elements is going to have these classes values we don't have any values of these dark classes but when i enable the dark mode all the classes with the dark prefix will take precedence over these unprefix classes. Let me show you how you can enable the dark mode now. You just need to add a class to your HTML element, which is going to be dark. That's it. Now let me save this file and show you the result. As you can see, when I save the changes, this is going to convert my website into dark mode. Right now I have dark background and a white text. So this is going to enable all these dark prefix classes. That's easy, right? You just need to add a class to your HTML element dark. And you're not limited to manually specify this class to your HTML. You can use JavaScript for that. Just create a JavaScript file, add a toggle button inside your index, and using JavaScript, you can add and remove class attribute of this HTML element. If you have a basic understanding of JavaScript, then you can do that as well. If you want, I can create a complete project on it. Just comment me down if you want me to create a project on it. So I hope you understand the basics and the advanced concept of Delvin. Now your job is to tweak into Delvin documentation and experiment with it. If you want me to create a project with Delvin, then let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video if you find anything useful and subscribe for more programming videos. If you have any question about this course, don't forget to comment. You can support me on the Patreon page. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.